And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to GeekWatch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother here in the temple. He is the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. How you, how you doing tonight? Nothing could bane your existence as much as Power Rangers Samurai banes mine. I don't know, I had to watch the Vikings today. Touche. And and had to watch and had to watch the another case of okay, you okay, you need a field goal, otherwise you're gonna lose the game. Oh this is a chip shot. You you can probably you can probably get this. Oh my god, what the fuck? Wide to the right at the end of regulation. Something Choking. Pain. Pain, Pecco. Yes. <sighs> but I am not. But I, but this week we are not here to discuss that. We are here to do a first for the for Geek Watch. Our first our first sequel, not a part two, a full on sequel. You see. Way back in March, we did a we did a reconstruction of Book One, Heir of the Legend of Korra. Well, ac actually, because of legal reasons, the full title is Avatar: The Last Airbender: The Legend of Korra. Why? Blame James Cameron. <laughs> B oh, and what? Blame Jane Cam Cameron and his overrated, overexpensive drama. Environmentalist film. Dances with Smurfs, let's call it what it is. Isn't that one getting a sequel soon, too? I've heard, but um, uh, it's a case of I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, it's uh, it's slated for 2022, so... not. We, we prove that we are faster and better than James Cameron by making our own sequel. <laughs> uh, I'm not dumb enough to get, in a to get in a fight with Conan, so there's that. Although, get although given some of his recent comments, I may have to reconsider that. Anyway. I, um, origi now, originally, all right, when we did that one back in March... We we went we wanted to go with we went with that particular idea because, as I understood it, um, Le the Legend of Korra was only supposed to go one season and then it was going to be done with. Um, same thing happened with Batman Forever. It was just supposed to be one season and that's it. And then the higher up said, "Great, what do you got for next season?" Wait, what? And then and then that happened. To, then that happened a few more times. So, since we covered the start of it, we may as well cover the rest. Which brings us to this week's topic. Reconstructing the Legend of Korra, books 2 through 4. And I think the first step of our reconstruction is to reconstruct a sentence you just said. You meant Batman Beyond and not Batman Forever. Yeah. I don't know what I, don't know what I was thinking on that front. I don't know what you were thinking either, but I was waiting for a chance to stomp on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, you, yeah, you're probably salivating in the process, knowing you. Mm, no, but I was uh, tenting my fingers, much like a uh, much like one glasses uh, bad dad turned good. But <laughs> he actually became a good father in the end. For anyone who hasn't seen it yet, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I was tempted to bring that up with his voice actor, but nah, too easy. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> with the with the with these three books, we have um, we have three vi we have three villains each, even and even even though um, it's three spins on the sa on the same on the same um concept. That we had, that we had, or that we had originally, with um, with Co with Amon, and 
with and with this kind with this kind of thing in with this kind of thing in mind, um, because of the fact that they decided to remove Amon as as they did, they're a case of well, since since we wrapped that up, what are we going to do now? And that they decided to extend it and um, got off to a really bad foot because book two, Spirit, was the sh was the season that broke the Legend of Korra for me. It was teetering already, but the things that happened in book two in book two um, really put really pushed it over the edge. You're more gracious than I, Monk. I uh, I already I think I already said in our previous reconstruction that book one alone fucked everything for me because instead of Amon being really cool and being something like maybe being a hidden energy bender in disguise, it was just blood bending. Mm -hmm. I was like, but blood bending doesn't work that way. I was I was willing to give a, I was willing to give a little bit of leeway because because I was I was under the impression of hey they've been out of the game they've been out of the game for a few years maybe maybe they're just trying to get their footing you know I tried as as difficult as it may sound to some I do try to be nice it's not difficult for it's not difficult for me to understand considering that you do try to be nice why else am I still here. <laughs> Mostly because I haven't killed you yet. Uh, you know you can't. But, th but um, but then they then they ended up crossing the line when it came when it came to when it came to pull, when it came to pull, when it came to pulling a long a long flashback that is is essentially a big dumb retcon when it comes to exploring the mystery of the original Avatar Wan. Or as he may as well be known, Wad, because he's a fucking idiot. And in the process, detailing that the uh, that the source of the whole Avatar thing is not is not the spirit of the Earth as we had as we had been led to believe, but a light spirit that had been in constant conflict with a dark spirit. That's right. You heard it here, people. Or if you've watched the Legend of Korra, I feel bad for you, but you saw it there. They introduced the concept of ultimate evil and ultimate good. Even though, even though this is still a very wuxia-inspired um, setting, and thus that whole concept of ultimate evil and ultimate good does does not fit at all. Yeah, this isn't a uh, this isn't a, a Xuanhan. It is a uh, it is instead a wuxia or even partially xianxia. I could I could argue that the avatars himself a Shansha character in a Wuxia world. Mm -hmm. But <sighs> you, you can have a, a, a struggle of morals, and there are going to be morals which are beneficial and morals which are not beneficial, or morals that are beneficial to many and morals that are beneficial to one, if you want to even get it more granular. These these are things we commonly see in Wuxia and Shansha. Um Young, you've got the whole arrogant young masters trying to beat down our main character because, well, they think they're better for whatever reason. And the main character, in many cases, is just as much an asshole. Uh, he just, you know, is an asshole for different reasons and protects more people than these other people do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's never a, it's never a one hundred percent right and one hundred percent wrong uh, response. It is a response of degrees. Yes, and. This this is the re this is the reason why I compare I compared this to the pa to the um the prophets and pa the prophets and pa wraiths um thing in Deep Space Nine. Yeah. It is. It's not exactly the same, but it is. Tr it is treading similar ground. That be that being um that being reducing s reducing a grand a grand mystery that doesn't need solving. <laughs> to light and dark spirits, which I want to make clear, there's nothing wrong with um, having ultimate good and ultimate evil in a story, as long as it fits. This did not. <laughs> no. And the and it being a it being a whole new se it being a whole new um, series is no excuse. Not Especially considering bit. it was building on a, on an already established world. Mm -hmm. 
and when you when you build on an established world, you better goddamn know. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, these guys were the writers. They should have definitely known. Um, <clears throat> the the big thing is you can have light and dark spirits that aren't ultimate good and ultimate either. Either they can just be. Ah, uh, cool. They can just be spirits that are more benevolent and spirits that are more malevolent. Mm -hmm. Spirits that are very powerful that are benevolent and malevolent. You could have very weak light and dark spirits. You could have very strong light and dark spirits. And ultimately, you could still serve to have conflict through one or more of these spirits without them being the ultimate be-all, end-all of good and bad. And that that's... That's where the re that's where the real issue co comes about, and also the I the idea that um, that they ended up getting bending as gifts from the lion tur from getting the ability to bend as gifts from the lion turtle instead of imitating animals. The thing the thing is a lot of a lot of the revelations that they were d that were done in season two were things that didn't need to be explained or and or were explained in a way that reduces the setting instead of expanding it. Yeah, we already had explanations for how bending was discovered. The earth bending from the badger moles, the fire bending from the dragons, the air bending from the flying bison and other air animals in the nomad areas, and of course, water bending from literally the moon, which I would argue is more impressive than having it imbued upon you than a lion turtle. And the thing, the thing, the thing with, the thing with. It, now I've seen some people argue that it that that what it sh that what it showed wasn't the that the that when people had it from the lion turtle, all they did was just throw it about instead of the martial art aspect. But I don't buy that. One, I don't buy that either. And two, um, Korra, the Legend of Korra, when it came to the writing team, they seemed to want to try and abandon the martial art aspect of bending altogether. Which is one thing that we uh, we changed back to being better in our first episode. Mm -hmm. That being that, yes, those martial forms are tied to those elements. It's part of how those elemental bendings work. Because there's a specific thought process that goes into martial arts, even different forms. There's a different way of thinking. Your mind literally works differently. This has been tracked by people doing martial arts with electroencephalograms on. This is a scientific thing from real life that can be used as a spiritual thing in these fictional shows and is commonly used as a spiritual thing in these fictional media. Mm -hmm. So having it that, you know, waterbending was, was essentially Tai Chi Tuan. It's essentially, that's what, the, that's what it was based off of. Mm -hmm. And the mindset of Tai Chi Tuan is one of serenity and balance and motion. So it's not it's not hard to say that, oh, well, they didn't get the bending movements. They were just throwing it around. Yeah, sure. But go look at season one of Korra again. They didn't just do the martial arts movements. They were just throwing the elements around. Even Korra. They got rid of the martial arts and mixed it up with some sort of brawling style, which was dumb. Again, something we got rid of. Now, if you want to, if you want to argue, now if you want to argue that um, that styles had cross pollinated because of the advent of Republic City, I'm not willing to buy that either because not enough time has passed. That's true. Although I would think there would be some people that were starting to do it. I mean, lightning bending became a lot more uh, commonplace in order to generate electricity. I don't see why they didn't create a dynamo after that so that the lightning benders didn't have to keep hitting things with lightning, but that's just me. Oh. They have they have cars and other things. Why can't they create dynamos? <clears throat> this is this is what this is what happens when you don't do your damn research. So do your damn research, people. Especially when you're trying to, especially when you're trying to world build. World building is a is a fun process, but it's a process where things can go wrong very easily. Do your detailed research. Yes. Um, although then, when you do your detailed research, you get something like a Mushoku Tensei, where there are some very 
advanced things for medieval Europe because of how magic works. But then again, most things are still very close to medieval Europe. Yeah, I was. I thought you were going to say when someone going overboard and doing the research ends up with um with Shinra bon- with the Shinro Bancho visual novels. <laughs> Shinra Bancho works too, um, or a really good one that most of you may not have heard of: How the Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. They have very conflictory. Uh, technological states because of replacing certain technologies with magic and i find that fantastic mm-hmm. however then then all all of this cul- all of this culminates with the, with the villain being a dark avatar which w- which could have been a cool idea if you actually expanded upon it that just because you took him out doesn't mean that that dark avatar isn't going to reincarnate somewhere else I mean, that was actually one of... I think... I honestly... Okay, so I honestly think the reason they made Unalaka Dark Avatar was they heard how pissed off people were about Amon and his brother and uh, and how Amon was just a water tribe bloodbender. Because I re- distinctly remember as Korra was airing the first book that uh, one of the theories around Amon is he was sort of an anti- Avatar to impose balance that the Avatar was no longer keeping for whatever reason. Um, which, honestly, was a cool idea. Again, this is a case of fans think up things that not even the writers think of. Um, and then I think they just kind of said, oh, well, we had a waterbender people liked and they wanted an anti-Avatar. Let's do that. I almost think that that's what they did. If they did, if they did, congratulations, you com- congratulations, you completely missed the point. <laughs> yeah, but that's all of Korra completely missing the fucking point. Um, but then we then we ended up getting the then after that there was the whole thing with one, the idea of trying to impose a har- a coexistence between humans and spirits in Republic City that didn't exactly last, and two, all of a sudden we start seeing Airbenders um show. Showing up, showing up out of nowhere, or not out of nowhere, but just regular people suddenly becoming airbenders, and neither of which make any fucking sense. And um, then and and and, sh- and then the whole the whole thing with um, with the Red Lotus and Zaheer, and um, I'm pretty sure I wasn't the only one making Bane jokes at his expense because that's what his plan felt like. What with the what with the whole him being a hardcore anarchist, who is specific, who is specifically targeting um, rulers of countries, and granted, as if granted, the Queen of the Earth Kingdom was a bitch, but she didn't deserve to go out like that. You're right; she deserved to go out worse, but that's a different story. <laughs> <sighs> um, I will, I will be perfectly honest. The whole air sphere around the head to draw out the breath from your lungs thing that's a fucking cool idea but we had hints of that in the original avatar remember when they got to one of the air nomad temples they found the body of an air nomad surrounded by a bunch of bodies of invaders obviously long skeletons after you know you know since 100 years after the the fire nation first went after the air nomad temples Mm -hmm. but it implies that the Oh, so peaceful air nomads did kill when they had to. Yeah. So the whole air sphere thing, I have a feeling that's something air nomads how to do. Mm-hmm. Especially since it would eliminate a threat in the quickest and most efficient way possible. Yep, and with the smallest use of bending. Mm-hmm. Which in- includes the efficiency, but you know, I felt that, that that that's a very small amount of bending to create what is essentially your air scooter, except in reverse around someone's head. Mm-hmm. But to but to be quite honest, the the whole Red Lotus arc felt like an extended OVA rather than a part. Things just <laughs> things just kind of moved around, and not a whole lot <clears throat> happened. You had you had some characters get getting power ups, and then you had the grand plan, which to try and kill the avatar, which was using extreme mercury poisoning 
to put them in a constant av to put them in a constant avatar state until until they d until they die. Because if you kill them while they're in avatar state, it's supposed to end the avatar chain forever or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and we forgot to we forgot to mention the whole thing of at the end at the end of spirit, um, somehow systematically removing the the past incarnations. You know, more Mary Sue bullshit. Yeah, destroying the avatar cycle all the way back to the to Avatar One until. The, fir the new first avatar is Korra. That was... That felt like me as an attempt to make Korra more important than she was. Mm -hmm. Which is ridiculous. And uh, that's... And, and again, when this kind of thing comes up, I always, people, people, have insist, people have insisted a bit too enthusiastically to me that um, Korra is not a Mary Sue. And then I bring up this kind of thing, and I don't hear a peep. Korra is a Mary Sue for multiple reasons. We covered some of them in the first episode. Like mm -hmm. the fact that by, what, the age of five, she could... Realistically, she could bend, with ease, three elements. Mm -hmm. With ease. Like, without even really practicing the proper forms and everything... She could at least bend them. The proper forms just gave her, uh, ostensibly, better control. Mm -hmm. She still couldn't airbend, though. Instead, our version actually had to go learn all that stuff. Yeah, and we'll get we'll get to <clears throat> we'll get to that in a moment. But then, then we end up get then eh, after that whole thing, and and her and I rem I remember at the time. Because of the fact that she, because of the fact that she just di that she just disappeared, cut, cut her hair, and went a and went AWOL for a while, I had I had I had um, speculated that maybe the final season was going to be them exploring her having um, Minamata's disease. But uh, but unfortunately, no no it was just, no it was just P it was just PTSD and not all of the um, mercury was ta was taken out of her, which is why she couldn't use the Avatar state for. A until she met Toph. But... I mean, exploring Minamata's disease would be a little, uh... Would be a little hard to, uh... I'm not, I'm not saying go with that, but more of, more of go with she's, she's got a... She's, she's on a, um... She's on borrowed time after, after what happened. Yeah, so her lifespan has been created as, uh... It has been shortened to a point where she can only do so much. Mm -hmm. And then you had the whole thing with Kuvira, who was a full-on fascist, trying to when it came to trying to unite the Earth Kingdoms un under under her under her banner. And to be fair, she's probably the best villain in the in the Legend of Korra. She's <laughs> so uh, uh, she's. The most after Amon ignoring his ending because mm -hmm. the Amon up until you know his very ending was really good as a villain. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the second best in the series, and it's because a her motivations are believable. B her method of of uh, her method of you know being an imperialist conqueror fascist is actually believable and most people say fascist as a buzzword in this case what she is doing is actually fascism let's mm. not let us not ignore that kuvira was literally performing fascist uh fascist conquering um but beyond all that she she wasn't extremely self-righteous like both Unalak and uh, Zahir and the Red Lotus were. Yes. She saw it as more of a necessity than anything. Like, she had to do this. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, she felt, A, more relatable. A relatable villain is sometimes really good. Sometimes, not having a relatable villain, like a masked man just doing 
things to people to take away their bending is cool. If it fits the situation you're in, that's fantastic. It's, it makes for great storytelling. But conversely, if a more relatable villain who is doing terrible reprehensible things because she believes it is ultimately necessary for peace fits the, fits the situation, then doing that works as well. And that's, I think that's the best point to make about both Amon and, Kov- and Kavira. Um, they're two vastly different ways of doing what they were doing were both interesting because of the situations they were executed in. Mm-hmm. Now, wh- now, um, all, th- all three of these villains, um, Unalak, Z- <coughs> <coughs> sorry, Zaheer, and Kuvira, are all kind of going on that whole equality mo- motif that Amon was trying to do, but in di- but in different ways, essentially repeating the same point. Um, and the but the but the fa- the fact of the matter is that because because of because of the fact that they were that there was that repetition, um, neither of them was going to have a whole lot of staying ability, especially when. Uh, when it's very clear that they're that um you that they're going to be gone at the end of this at the end of that season, um and of course and of course there were there were other bits of fail like the um if the I will I will say if there's any um if there's any good that ca- that came out of that came out of seasons two through four, it is Varric and Julie. Heh. <laughs> uh... That's not saying that's not saying much, but they were always a treat to watch. Yeah, yeah. Now, and of course, of course, at of course at the end, there's the there is the implication that Korra and um, Asami decide to go off into the go off into the spirit world and be and be a couple. Um, which which, like I said before, I'm not like I said before, I'm not giving you a pass just because. Just for, just for, yeah, just for yay, canon le- canon lesbians. Sorry, you don't. Sorry, you don't get a pass for shit writing. When I say everyone is cremated equal, I mean everyone gets the roast, no matter who or what they are. There are no exceptions. Even ourselves. Yep. We've roasted ourselves every so so often too. Some more than others, mm-hmm. Doku. <laughs> 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 but uh, <clears throat> but with all with all that said, let us have a go. Indeed. So we're gonna because of the fact that it did the most damage, we're going to start with book two. And um, I think before we even get into this, we do we should um. We should do a bit of a we should do a bit of a recap on on what on what we did with book one. Mm-hmm. First off, um, the version of Korra that we have is some is someone who is tr- is trying her is trying her best to live up to the I, live up to a certain ideal of being of being this mature of being this mature mature at mature um mature thoughtful meth- and methodical avatar. Um, yes. She's not unlike a- Ang was trying to be a kid. She's tr- she's trying to be an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I remember by the end of book one, she had started building that more mature uh, mindset, becoming a little bit more understanding that there are hard decisions to make and, and ways that she's going to have to make them. Yes, and she by the by the time by the time. She, Instead of focusing on on lear- on learning one particular style of um, bending, she already has all four right out of the gate because that's not where her arc is. Yeah, but we did we did give her a small prologue of what was essentially an extended Rocky montage of her training in the different kingdoms under the different people, including our our. Uh, Famous uh, Nekrojita joke or Nekrojita joke. Yeah, which um, I'm still keep I'm still keeping the fact that she d- that she's still a bit of a Nekrojita. Yeah, because it because it's funny. It's funny and it'll make for good comedic moments to to break tension. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it's, all, we all it's, it's also a good way to it's also a good way to call to call to call back if if um if say she's drinking tea with Zuko in the future and Zuko's just staring daggers at her. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. I know that we also kept the the godforsaken romance tangles to a pure minimum. We that um, is that is ver that is very much the case. Um, when it came to but when it came to Bolin and Mako, um, we decided to kill instead of doing the whole um, pro bending thing. Mako is Mako is, is still trying to make it as an athlete, but he's trying to make it as essentially a cage fighter. Yeah, he he wanted to do something without his bending. Mm -hmm. And since I I said that he looks like he has the build of a Muay Thai fighter, we w we decided to go with that approach. Yes, yeah. for him, um, being it being in the cage, there is something pure about it. Since it's not about who it's not about who's who's got better bending or what or what element or what tribe they're. They ha they happen to be from. It's all about who. It's all about who can, who can punch the hardest and who can and who can actually get back up. Yep. Um. And then uh, I also know that because of our finale with the original book, as um, Cora has to go face down Amon alone, and her friends are there to back her up and keep the the unruly masses from breaking into the the Republic headquarters, um, uh, <laughs> Asami and, and Mako fight together, and both of them are impressed with the tricks each other has. Mm -hmm. And that, and we started what is probably a more believable and longer-lasting romance between the two than what was initially shown in book one of yeah. Korra. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes... Now, when it, com when it comes... And when it came to, um, I, I do, I do, I do still have to kick myself that I ended up turning Bolin into Alphonse Elric inadvertently. <laughs> that was, that was, that was a good one. I'm glad that you realized that during it too. That the, it's still, if the shoe fits. Yep. Um, or, it, or in the words of House Cuvier, in the words of, um, House Curita, if I fits, I sits. <laughs> because the Draconis combine, it, combine is known for making very sound tactical decisions. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even say that with a straight face. I didn't know whether to to laugh or to just sigh, so I decided to do neither. Anyway, um, we had we had also. We also went. We also went with the. I, we also went with the fact that um, um that um for that Amon's um Amon's chi blockers um were very proficient hand to hand people, but they could only actually perform chi blocking while the, while they had the while they had their opponent pinned or helpless. Whereas Amon, he, he can just he can just do that whenever the hell he wants. Yeah, Amon. Amon is basically like a fully trained uh, uh, Kyoshi warrior. Mm -hmm. And as far with the um, his ability to energy bend was a gift from uh, from a lion turtle that he that he had met a long time ago. Basic basically he had t basically taking a bargain where he where the turtle decided to give him test him. Te yep. Test him by giving him the ability to see what he would do with it, and when he ended up getting up, when he ended up getting on the ropes, and 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 start and got a little bit too reliant on that on that ability, the li the lion turtle said, "Well, your time's up. You failed," and takes it back. Yep. And it took fighting the avatar herself for him to realize that he had become the thing he had hated. And once he, once he had once he had realized that it's basically a case of that that was that was the moment when his when his deal had run out mm -hmm. and of co of course the whole reason that there was the whole sto there was the whole storming the castle moment to begin with is one we had already established that um that she, that Cora well she likes Republic City she's bet she's She's been there by this point for I'd, I'd say about a year, and she's she's kind of settled into the place. 
Yep. She has people that she knows and likes, people who know her face, mm -hmm. people she wants to protect. It's part of how we matured her. Yeah. And of and of course there was the whole thing of instead of instead of having the instead of having the Republic army get get um get screwed get screwed over and be ineffectual, we had we had it that um General Iro was trying to do everything he could to hold the Republic army back. Yeah. Because he knew that if they if they come in if they come in with the knowledge that with the knowledge that an energy bender is down there, they may as well just they may they may just bombard the place and be done with it. Yeah. I.e., keep them up. Keep. I'm trying to keep them. You get. You've got to deal with Amon, and you've got to deal with Amon as quickly as you can because I can't hold them off forever. And if they, and if they bring in the blimps, a lot more people are gonna die. Yep. The the entire city will go up in flames to get rid of one rogue energy bender. Mm -hmm. And if that if that seems if that seems excessive, well, if he, if you can take away people's bending that easily, you're not going to take any chances. Yeah. Energy bending was rare enough as it is. Only Avatar Aang was known to do it in recent history. And uh, it was something that took away the megalomaniacal Fire Lord Ozai's bending completely. When you have a guy who's doing it to random citizens on the street and has done it to multiple people, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the end of it, um, she ends up making her first press conference where she reveals to the world that she's at that she's Avatar Korra. Our I, uh, our I am Iron Man moment. I remember yeah. that. And which was made even worse by by our good by our good buddy King Kaiser popping in and saying, "I'm just a passing through waterbender." <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love you, Kaiser, but fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. That that was how that was how we that was how we end that was how we ended, um, book one, yeah. and that br that brings us to, um, book two. And I, th I think um I think the first thing that we can do is establish a establish a bit of a time skip. How long, how long do you think there's sh how long of a gap do you think we should have between, um, books one and two? Are you thinking a year or six months? I think um I think we should actually split the difference about nine months. That's what I imagine it would take to rebuild all the destroyed infrastructure in, in Republic City mm -hmm. and also uh, get things to a particular balanced standard within governance. Um, and of course, because Korra is helping directly, since you know she's part of this, she's part of Team Korra, who, who is on her side is you know, the Soto family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, they're involved in the government too. <laughs> But Team, Team Korra is not only going to have to deal with the aftermath of the entire um, just siege of Republic City or whatever we'll, they'll call it historically. They have to deal with the aftermath of Korra going, yeah, I am Iron Man to the world, mm -hmm. basically. And she has to take on even more responsibility because we, we, she was staying initially when she very first got to Republic City with a White Lotus... Uh, with, with with a white lotus operative nest, basically, place uh, one of their secret little hidden a uh, safe house. Yeah, one of their secret cells. Mm -hmm. And now she's probably opening, openly living out in probably the Soto Mansion, since she has to work with government so much. Uh, also, you know, because uh, the, the Soto Mansion, excuse me, um, because of the fact that uh, she has to. Uh, you know, she has to interact with, with government and also because, you know, the, the Sados have all that wonderful technology that gets her around Republic City very quickly and she has to answer to a lot of things very quickly. So as, as, a, as a matter of both convenience and as a matter of completing her responsibilities effectively, I think she, she and probably all of Team Avatar would be uh, guests of the Sato family at their mansion using, you know, the Sato mobiles, obviously... <laughs> <laughs> would be their chauffeur and also a bodyguard mm -hmm. because we've already established that through the maturity of all of these people uh, they're all good fighters mm -hmm. um Azami is even uh, she's even more uh, uh of an of a 
of an inventor than she was in the initial uh in the initial show because she's got a fiery drive for it the really big drive to prove not only to herself and her father but to the world that these advancements can can improve lives for non-benders as well as benders mm -hmm. um, and oh, go ahead and because of that um i think in after the nine month time skip uh We'll, we'll find that things are calming down. The world has probably also been helping out with these recovery out efforts since Republic City is supposed to be this melting pot. Yes. So this, is, this can be probably the hook by which we draw into the plot of our next crisis. And just to, just to, um, just to set, just to, um, helps just to further set this particular scene, there's a, there's some there's some there's some other aspects I want I want to I want to get into is to kind of set to kind of set the stage of how things are going um mm. for 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 one thing I think I think after I think after all this time um um Ma Mako and Asami are outright dating and um and and you and I'd prob I probably have it that there's a bit of uh, when it com when it comes to when it comes to um when it comes to Mr. Sato himself, um, instead instead of him being stuck instead of him being stuck in j in jail, the approach that I'm going with is, okay, you did the right thing at the end, but you still did a <clears throat> you still did um up until up until a point aid and abet a terrorist, so mm -hmm. you're gonna be you're going to be put on house you're gonna be put on house arrest for the, for the next year. Yep. And he's also, um, but even though he's on house arrest, he still uh, has to act as as a member of, of government, even remotely, mm -hmm. as, as a way. Which is another reason that Korra and Asami are going around. Asami is probably now his. Uh, she's she's essentially she's essentially handling the day to day work of um of of the company. Yep. And also probably has to hand over government missives from her father every so often. Yeah, she's she's his a, she's um, in legal terms she would be his agent. Pretty pretty much, and of and um, when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to Ma when it comes to um, Mako, I'd say he I'd say he's pursuing hit I'd proceed I'd say he's pursuing um, his goal to an extent of being. A, prof a professional fighter, but he's he's kind of, he's he's been do he's been more and more doing that kind of part time and spending more t and spending more time as Asami's bodyguard and bodyguard well bo well bodyguard and significant other, but you get my point. A, a bodyguard she probably resents because she's like I can take care of myself. You saw that. Um, I get the feeling the whole bot the whole bodyguard thing is Mr. Sato's idea. Likely, they're probably both a little exasperated by it. Because I'm, I'm kind of going with the approach of Sato's heart is in the right place. It's just, it's just, um, he's, he's, ba he's basically pulling, a, he's basically pulling a full-on dad moment kind of thing. Of course he is. Most dads do. Mm -hmm. And we, and, and if, and one thing we didn't change about Sato, about Hiroshi Sato, is the fact that he loves his daughter. Yeah. We just—it's just—it's just that when it came to the whole, oh, oh, his, oh, his mother, his, his wife was ki his wife was killed by a bender, and that's and that's why he joined with them. It's the case of that was probably the case at the, at he probably had that at one point. He probably had that mindset at one point, but afterwards, as to as he realized what was that what was actually going to be going down, he was like, no, no, you're putting my daughter in danger, so fuck off. <laughs> yep. Um, which we already we already established back in March, mm -hmm. but. When it comes, to, but when it comes when it comes to um when it comes to Ma when it comes to um Mako, um occasion occasionally he's pulled he's um he's pulled these he's pulled these swap whenever he, whenever his brother um ends up do, ends up doing ends up ends up doing his um fights, so mm -hmm. occasionally occasionally he'll be the he'll be the bodyguard and um it which is another way we can have some awkward comedy. Awkward comedy when Bolin has to act as as a uh, as Mako. At, at, act in act in his stead. Yeah. 
when he when obviously he obviously he looks nothing like him. <laughs> yeah, about that. Um, <laughs> I'm not I'm not planning on having them look like a, look like look like identical twins or something like that. That's that's no, a we bit didn't... much. Yeah, we didn't. We, we we said that they still they were still very unique to each other, even back in the first episode. That's mm-hmm. all we've been established. Um, it's it's just it's just that um he's it's just that um he's he's not he's not used to be he's not used to being around that many kind that many um important people in that regard. So yeah, he so has, he gets way more nervous. Mm-hmm. So he has clam he has clam up issues, and <laughs> and Asami has to essentially act as the big sister in that in that regard. I mean, she kind of is gonna be, <laughs> but um, in that reg- also in that regard, uh, this I think at this point since we've established our time skip and what they've been doing, yeah, we need to first establish. Are we still going to have it be an issue in the Water Tribe that is where the crux of our crisis starts? I'm get I'm getting to that. There's okay. A, there's a couple um there's a couple of loose ends I need I need to tie up first. Okay. Um, now when it when it comes I wouldn't I don't I wouldn't have to change too much when it comes to when it comes to ten, when it comes to Tenzin and the and and the and the rest in in Republic City the key the key th- the key thing is um. The first, the first, the first thing that would, I'd say would be go would be going down is that there are a lot more, um, a lot more delegates from the other nations, um, coming to, coming to Republic City, to bo- to both see to both see the new Avatar and well try and curry favor, mm-hmm. and Cor- and Cora is Cora is slowly be so slowly having to act in, act in a position that she didn't exactly have a whole lot of training for, and that is be- and that is being a semi political figure. And it's probably also causing her exasperation because, to her, it's. We already established she's also very intelligent, thoughtful, and metho- and, and methodical. Mm-hmm. To her, it probably seems very uh, obvious that she cannot make uh, promises or favors to any one country. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't understand why the rest of them are trying. Yes. That's that's ver- that's very much the that's very much the approach. Now, as far as far as the as far as the um, I think the last thing that I think we need to bring up before we establish a crisis is should we introduce um, Varric now or later? Um, it would actually probably be best to establish Varric now. In the um, in that re- in that regard, um. Because in in the prime approach, um, the Sato company was struggling hard. Mm-hmm. We're not taking we're not taking that approach. the the Sato the Sato company cer- is certainly certainly had a black eye on it, but it is it is re- but it's more or less recovered because of how much how much they put into the rebuilding efforts. Mm-hmm. So the approach that I'm going with instead is that. This is that the sod is that um is is that is that Ver Verick and Ju, Ver, is that um Verick and Ju, Verick and Julie are he, are heads of a um of a of a company in the company within Republic City that the, that that they've de- that Sato has decided to coll- has decided to collab with um. Most mostly because mostly because of the whole I do you a favor you do me a favor and even Sato's not happy with it because it's a case of oh oh god I got oh god we got to meet up with Varric just yeah but <laughs> but unlike unlike Hiroshi Sato who is a very uh, stoic and reserved looking guy Varric I, I I we need to keep his charisma I'm sorry I have no plans on changing that one bit as well as. Having Julie be the straight man in that situation, Varric is just too precious. Otherwise, um, so <laughs> now the real thing we need to—well, no, actually, we have to establish a crisis before we can establish the next crisis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> um, now Varric is still going to be—he's charismatic, but he's also still going to be very smart. I'm sorry. Um, 
a man who makes a billionaire business is not going to be dumb. Mm-hmm. I'd say I'd say that he I'd say that instead of making his money in industry, he made his money in enter, in entertainment and media. Which would make sense for the type of personality he is. Mm-hmm. He is someone who is not Vince McMahon. No. <laughs> or, <laughs> on, honestly, honestly, he'd pro- honestly he'd probably be he'd probably he'd probably be more akin to Vince Senior rather than Junior. I can see that. Um, or or just or just Vince in the eighties. Um. You know when you know when he didn't want anybody to know that he owned the company. You mean Vince before he lost his mind? Yes. Look, I, look, just go look. If you want to, if you want to see what I mean, just go back and watch those old Saturday Night's main event when he when he was a when he was a announcer opposite Jesse Ventura. Um, but the but go but getting past that. The 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 I do I when it comes to when it comes to the crisis um there's t- there were two things that ended up happening er, happening early on that I think ne- I think we need to address on how we're ge- on how we're going to hash or whether or not we nuke one of them is of course we have we have to introduce Unalak and things going down at a spi- at a essentially a spirit festival the other thing is the is the um grow is the growing tension between the northern and southern water tribes. Um, and here here's my proposal on that kind of thing. Um, Unalak is the is Unal Unalak it now. First off, we don't really have we can't we don't really have the whole. This is a bit this is a bit of a homecoming, but. We never. I don't think we ever established which water tribe Korra was from, whether she was from the north or the south. And I'm I'm of two minds about this. On one hand, we on one end we can do it that she was from the northern water tribe because we'd already seen the southern water tribe a lot um, in in the early, in the early parts of Atla, or mm-hmm. she or she um or her or um she she had ju- she had jumped ba- she had jumped back and forth as a little girl. I think it makes the most sense to go that she started in the Northern Water Tribe, and then uh, during her during as, her training, she ended up jumping between all the kingdoms, which meant the Southern Water Tribe as well. Mm-hmm. This also uh, keeps parts of Tonrock's uh, background in in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, Tonrock can later move to the Southern Water Tribe, and you know. Surprise, Korra, that he's the new chief there. Yeah, maybe as part of this whole next uh, arc. Do you mean Do you mean Tarlock? You said Tonlock. No, I said Tonrock. Tonrock. <laughs> it's the problem when you have names with too with too many sil- similar syllables. No, to- Tonrock is is a uh, chief of the Southern Water mm-hmm. Tribe and Korra's dad. Yeah, but obviously in this situation, she's he's not Korra's father. True, but uh, Tonrock. Uh... Well, d- did we did we really need to have her not be the the daughter of the chief at all? We dis- we never really we, established. We remar- we remarked that having her effectively be a princess like that is um is is is, is a bit is unnecess is unnecessary. So we ended up but, killing that off. But that doesn't. If she starts in the Northern Water Tribe. And Tonrak is still there when he has her. All he is is a is a general in the military. He isn't a chief or anything. Right, um, so you, so you'd probably would you have it that? Um, well, because her family is very loving. I think that's yeah. a that's a good thing to keep. Mm-hmm. And Tonrak was a very powerful character, um, even though he was only around for a little bit. The I, I personally think that what what's going what, what should happen here. He was in the Northern Water Tribe. He didn't get banished and disinherited because uh, he didn't destroy the sacred spiritual forest. Um, in, in fact, he just stays there as one of their generals. Um, maybe he's 
a little bit more long in the tooth. He's no longer a general on the front lines. He's a he's a general that sits behind the desk and makes the wider the wider picture moves. I um, also suspect in, that he that he uh, would he wouldn't care he wouldn't care for city life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So move, moving south would probably be a natural um a natural bit a natural bit of course for him. Mm-hmm. But it would happen after Cora got to Republic City. Mm-hmm. Um, so during that whole nearly two years she's been there now, he at some point moved to the southern the Southern Water Tribe, which is where I still think the conflict is going to end up occurring. Yeah, I, I think we're. I think the way the way you're saying this, it sounds like we are going to have the um, we're going to have the Spirit Festival take place um, south. But there's a mm-hmm. lot of uh, there's a lot of people from the northern tribe com- coming down. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would I would say I would I would say with this is also where we you can have you can have a couple introductions. One, um, her meet her meeting up with her with her fa- with her father, who's n- and the surprise of of him being the chief of the southern tribe. Mm-hmm. Um, and. In, on one, which on one hand is a case of oh good, good for you, but on the other hand it's a case of oh great, more politics. <laughs> um, yeah, she'll be more exasperated by it. She'll now, it's a mix. It's a mix of both. Happy, happy that her happy to happy that her that her father is in that position, but also exasperated because that that means that he, that means that he and by and by and by um, extension her and by extension herself. Are um f- are further mired in mo- in more politics than she- and um because of the fact that she's trying to remain staunchly neutral with with all of that, it creates more complications. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> is 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 Unalak still going to be our main antagonist? That's the next thing I want to establish. I would say yes, but I ha- I have um, but I, but. Because the the approach instead of, instead of the whole unification of spirits, the approach that I wanted to go with is Unalak is a ver- is a very in, in, is a very is in a lot of ways the opposite of his, of his southern counterpart. He is a very studious, a very scholarly man. Um, oh. In some in some ways you could in some ways you could kind of say that he fits the mold of the classical wizard lo- ro- locked up in their books, or or po- or I'd say more accurately. A bit of an alchemist, um, in terms of in terms of understanding the the secrets of the universe and secrets of um, spirits, especially when it comes to spirits. And you know how you know how the um, you know how with Halloween three, the big the villain of that one was was trying to bring back the more pagan roots of um, Halloween. He, yes, he is some the I'd say the overall goal that I have with him is that he is somebody who. Um, who who wants to who wants to bring back the old um the old traditions of spirit worship? Okay, so in, in this respect, instead of instead of unification, uh, <clears throat> he's more uh, disappointed at modernization. Yeah, he's he's a sen- he's essentially the he's essentially a hardcore neo paganist, mm-hmm. which would actually serve to explain even more why he disliked the current state of the uh, spirit festival mm-hmm. like he he he'd prob he'd probably look at it the same the same way a lot of people look at holidays of it being too um commercialized or ra- rather mm-hmm. that's how he sees it because of all the even though a lot of these sh- a lot of these shops that were seen at the spirit festival that's not far removed from say a um spirit f- a uh, say the kind of the kind of stuff you'd see during during summer festivals in parts of Japan. Yeah. Um but let's let's be fair here. Uh even even the Japanese in real life have naysayers about the commercialization of their sacred festivals. They're just much fewer and far between. I get the and they're probably looked at as fringe by the by their own countrymen. Um, 
you see, I don't think that the Japanese really think of them as fringe. They just think of them as people with different views. But that's because the Japanese are still of the mindset of we live in a very tiny island nation and everybody needs to be polite. <laughs> but that's a uh, that's rails there. Yeah. Um. The, but um. Because and I would I would say I would say the first start of this crisis is. Is the is the appearance of a dark spirit? Okay, so sort of similar to when Korra was woken by the Naga, but uh, however, a, however, we're a not, little different. We're not refer we're not referring it to it as a dark spirit in this case. It's um, a, it's essentially a, it's essentially a berserk spirit. Mm hmm. Um, much. Much like much like the um, much like the forest spirit that that had the appearance of a panda in Atla. Yeah. And you end up you end up when that shows up you end up having the rampage, and and Cora Na Cora naturally tries tries to tries to def tries to rise up to the um, the area's defense, ends up. Um, Ends up be, ends up get ends up being on the defensive, and we've we've established that whenever she whenever she's cornered, she tends to overdo it with her bending. Yeah, just out, just out of instinct, and that that ends up happening. But even but even that does even that doesn't work. And it's and it isn't until um it isn't until Unalak and some and a couple of his disciples use a purification ritual, not that um. That ends up that ends up exercising the spirit. Yeah, which I think is a, is a good way to actually uh, bring Korra and Unalak into a more uh, idiosyncratic relationship to talk to each other. Yeah, since um, Unal Unalak is as much of a politician as as any other leader. But the the fact that the fact that Cora specifically wants to speak to him about the, about the uh, about that technique, because is ends up leading to misunderstandings. Because in her mind, she wants to learn that technique so that she so that she can so that she can deal with a similar situation if it happens again on her own. Yep, and whereas, it's part of her uh, mm -hmm. part of her duty as Avatar. Yeah. Whereas, whereas, whereas everyone. Whereas every, whereas other people are looking at that and going, why is she talking with the leader of the Water Tribe when she rejected everyone else? And then, of course, uh, Unalak is going to take it in a, in the wrong fashion of the Avatar really does think the way I do. Mm -hmm. So you have three layers of misunder of misunderstanding because one of the other um, one of the other things that was br that was brought up in this was. Was the was a was a the possibility of a water tribe civil war? <clears throat> now it ultimately yeah, but the... it ultimately didn't happen because both sides backed off at the at the eleventh hour, but they were kind of they were kind of building to that before it before it didn't go down. Yeah, whereas in this new one, since Unlock is no longer trying to force unification, there's really not a build up for civil war in the first place. So this is going to be a different misunderstanding to push a different crisis. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, I would say that I would say that um, what en that what ends up happening instead is <clears throat> is she ends she ends up spending a good amount of time um, with um, trying to trying to learn fr trying to learn from from Unalak mm -hmm. and um, when her when her father when her father tri when her father tries to check up on that she. En she and she's more fo she's more focused on on the on the on um lear on learning exor on learning exorcism. Yeah, but because her father is is the Southern Water Tribe uh, chief and Unlock is the Northern Water Tribe chief, this uh, ends up creating a bit of tension where he and he ends up th he ends up assume he en he ends up assuming the worst. Mm-hmm. And and Cora has to has to burst out and go, Pe people, calm calm down. It's not it's not like that. Yeah, she has to draw up a statement of, you know, I'm learning a technique 
specific to my role as Avatar, this is not favor to any one party. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, is in and of itself going to be taken in multiple fashions and also going to be disbelieved by a few. I mean, there are some people who go, oh, no, it's clearly politically motivated, even when something clearly is not. Oh, yeah, that's that's the game. And um I and I would I would say that <clears throat> after after a after a bit of time um she because because of because of the tent be, there's there's the combination of um her earnestly wanting to lear, wanting to learn this and and wanting to focus on just that whereas all these other things dr end up drawing her attention that um that she and that she ends up she ends up deciding to leave to head back to Republic City. Mm -hmm. Um, more more ju more just as a es more just as a escape, and also we can use this to to ask the obvious question of why didn't the White Lotus teach her this? Yeah. Um. And also also through also through this she, you have an opportunity where she can confide in team cora which you know happens probably every episode we have but you know this is going to be more in depth yeah um and through and through th through this no one one other one other um one other one other as I'd say I'd say when she ends up returning to Republic City, that's when um, it's it's not something obvious, but she keeps noticing that certain things are just off with with um within within the city. Nothing in terms of an, of new gangs or anything or anything like that, but just um si just seeing th seeing things that shouldn't be there. the The approach that I'm going with is that for whatever reason, the veil between the sp between the human and spirit world is st is starting to thin. Yeah, naturally on its own. Mm -hmm. And uh, Grant, a lot of a lot of it is due to, a lot of it is due to berserk berserk spirits ca causing causing trouble. But that but um, being the avatar, she has a higher sensitivity and can see the the warning signs well before uh bigger issues start to arise yeah and this is this is where I'll po this is where I'll point something else out when she left um when she left Unalak's when she left Unalak's care um she ended up taking a couple she ended up taking a couple books with him namely bo namely books on pro on um projection okay cuz the approach that I'm going with is um is she is she feel she feels that in order to in order, in order to de in order to deal with the potential of of a future berserk spirit, she needs to have a better understanding of spirits. And mm -hmm. and unlike Aang, who was trained in projection as a child, mm -hmm. as part of being an air nomad, um, and could just step into the spirit world basically whenever he found the chance to, uh, she she really doesn't know how to do that. <laughs> yeah. The appro the approach that I'm the approach that I'm going with is that she ends up developing a means to project herself in to project her, herself and her friends into the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Um, and that that's where a bulk of that's where a bulk of their particular journey is go is going to ha is going to happen of them exploring the spirit world. Yeah. Um, and learning about how there are a lot more berserk spirits there than than before. Yeah, that's. You so you you have you have the you have the um I'd I'd say I'd say the the key that I'd want to go with when it comes to the when it comes to the um when it comes to the berserk spirits is these are spirits who are lashing out because they're afraid of being they're afraid of being forgotten with the with the way the world is progressing mm -hmm. and because of the fact that spirits don't th don't think the way other people do they're seeing this as more the lack, the lack of, the lack of some of the prayers of the past, they're seeing as a life and death kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And where, on the other hand, there are there are still plenty of benevolent spirits who, well, they're surprised to see they're surprised to see the avatar, and even more surprised to see other humans there. But 
but that's just, but they're um but they're not gonna, they're not going to be attacking them outright or be in fear of, in fear of them outright uh -huh. um and because of the because of the fact that some of them have bro have broken into um the human world it's starting to cause tears they've been trying to they've been trying to keep it at bay as long as they can but it's a, but it's a borrowed it's a borrowed time situation uh -huh. um and I'd say, I'd say that's I'd say in this kind of situation that's where we can have the other shoe drop. That per, that particular other shoe being that um that Unalak's um obsession with 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 ancient rituals and the like. Um he ended up he ended up digging into stuff that he shouldn't have. Yeah. And what what ended up happening is he f he found he found he found some ancient <clears throat> He, in his travels, a long time ago, found rituals for summoning spirits. Yeah. The problem is, it's less of a summoning and more of a forced dis and more of a forced displacement. Because you're essentially pulling someone from their world and then and then right into another. It's um, consider it our own twisted spin on the idea of getting isekai. <laughs> Okay. You I mean, know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this would technically count as isekai since it was more intentional. But yeah, I get it. Yeah, the whole, it's just, and for a lot of them, they're in they're in a completely foreign area, and they and they don't know how to they don't know how to handle it, so they end up go they end up going nuts trying to find a way back. Eventually, he did find a way back. He f found a way back, but um. His mindset, his mindset with this whole thing is, hey, maybe, maybe I can use this to my advantage to get people to embrace um, spirit worship more often. Uh huh. <clears throat> uh, I know it's, I know it seems a bit contrived to have to have someone create a problem and then create the solution. But his, but his mindset is is um get is getting people to to acknowledge the spirits more. He, by this is this is um for anyone who's a, a classic comics fan this is the watchman all over again mm -hmm. creating the problem to create the solution yes and oh the only the only difference here is that he's not trying to make a giant ass squid and kill all the scientists and artists who designed it on a desert island in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm what it what is in, what is instead go, what is instead going on with this case is um one is once they end up realizing that they that that's when um that's when th that's when things end up get, ends up think, things up, end up going for the worst because while they while they've been down there um Unalak and Unalak has has doubled down on his particular beliefs because for a while he thought hey the avatar agrees with me but when she leaves he has the mindset of the the avatar the avatar isn't worthy of her position huh? because she because she doesn't because she doesn't she doesn't understand that she doesn't understand the spirits like I do and she probably as part of that she probably gives him a really surface level reason for the reason she's going back to Republic City rather than explaining more in depth mm hmm And because she just wants to get the hell out of there at that point. Yeah, her old impulsiveness coming back to bite her at some points. Because mm -hmm. the the thing that we've established with her is that she's only impulsive when she fe when she feels a sufficient amount of stress. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she stops thinking things through at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, with that with that in mind, as the as they've been as they've been exploring the spirit world. Um, and po and possibly in the process meeting up meeting up with um pa with um past incarnations because I'm not, I'm not doing the whole thing of killing off past incarnations I'm doing the whole thing of her meeting with them yeah you know meeting Aang and Roku and the rest mm-hmm and of course and of course of course they're there's um, of course, when it comes to when it comes to meeting some of the people who have passed on, this is 
where you can have the cameo of Iro and do, and do the uh, <clears throat> and do a do a kind of callback to the cold leaf juice gag we did a, we did in the previous book. <laughs> with this thing. Cold tea is nothing but co cold tea. Tea that's not hot is just cold leaf juice. Yeah. And and Cord just going like father like son, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um but in but in the in the process um instead instead of instead of the whole concept of a of a dark avatar i ha i have a i have a different approach i have a different suggestion that might be equally monstrous he ends up um divide, he ends up creating a ritual that is essentially spirit fusion i e i e fusing spirits into his own body I can see that, especially since spirits are known to have some sort of effect on people. Yeah. The issue the issue I here is he ends up um, overdoing it and essentially becomes legion. <laughs> we are legion, for we are many. Yeah, he en he ends up fu he ends up fusing hundreds of spirits into into his body. Because in, in his in his mind he. In his mind, because of the fact that the Avatar is the un is the union between man between man and spirit, as he s or the bridge between the human and spirit worlds, he figures that if he can do this kind of fusion, he can become a Avatar like being himself. Mm -hmm. And at f and it f and in the pr in the process in the process um he ends up he ends up losing more and more of him of himself in this um kind of kind of leaning into kind cuz one thing one thing that was in Atla a few times but never in the legend of Korra is those moments where it leans a little bit into the spooky a little bit into the horror end of things the puppet master being a crucial example of this kind of thing yeah and I'm kind of going with with that in in this case, but it's more but in a different manner. Um so bec because because of because of that, he en he ends up he ends up have he ends up looking mostly like himself, but there are there are parts that um don't match and and seem to and seem to shift about. And what? And eventually, they end up. They end up get. They end, they end up returning, and that's when. That's when. Um, that's when. That's when Unalak tri tries to tries to tries to tries to make hit tries to make his move because he's he's completely he's completely lost himself to to the array of spirits and I'd as ch as cheesy as it may sound I do think him him housing a thousand spirits would be a good number for this kind of thing. Plus, it gives us a uh, that nice round horrific number, having to do with other terrible things with the number thousand in them, mm -hmm. such as the death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> yeah, well, that's literally what he—that's literally what he's been doing to himself. With yep. It, with this, with this particular ritual. Yep. So. And I, <clears throat> go ahead. I, I, I think that part of the reason the ritual starts going unstable is because as he takes on spirits, he feels himself getting stronger, and he gets overconfident and starts absorbing spirits faster and in larger quantities. Yes. Um. And event eventually, this is this is where you can have a a <clears throat> kaiju like moment. Of it, of him, of him, tur of him turning into this abomination. Mm -hmm. Um. And I, w I um. I would ha instead instead of using this to re to wreck um instead of wrecking the no the northern water tribe with with this I would ha I would have it that he go that he ends up fully transforming going it going into when he um absorbed let's say. I'd say um I'd say the final nail was hit would be him trying to absorb the ocean spirit. And that that's what 
going out going out to sea trying to use his ritual to absorb the ocean spirit that we saw in the that we saw in um book 1 of Atla. Mhm. Mm and then ends up going into this amalgamation kaiju like form and and trying to and trying to walk back to to the northern wa to the um northern water tribe villages and that and that's that's where things that's where things end up going to shit and that's where um it's around it's around that time that they that um that team Korra ends up leaving the spirit world realizing that Unalak has become something much more horrific than any normal berserk spirit could be. Well, that, that and they see the big fucking hole in the spirit world as more of them get sucked into sucked into that amalgamation. Yeah. And I'd say I'd say um I'd say I'd say when it comes to when it comes to this um cuz normally normally it would take a bit of time go, going from a public city to the north pole. Um, but this would be the perfect opportunity for Asami to, in, to unveil what to unveil one of her inventions. Essentially, um, it's ba basically basically with the whole thing of this is this is just a prototype. We haven't tested it before, but um, desperate times call for desperate measures. A su a subsonic plane. Yeah, probably a propeller seaplane. Because mm -hmm. Republic's on the sea. Yeah. And they're going to a water tribe, so more sea, easier to land on the sea, and they haven't really thought of building runways since it's a prototype. Mm -hmm. Um, and ha having have having having um having an airbender ar around would around would mean that you can you can utilize better currents in order to get more speed. Yes, I think um this is probably a part where we'd have a gag by somebody who's aware of engine driven boats mm -hmm. and where the propellers are on those and goes hey you've got the propeller you've, you, you've got the boats uh, propeller on the wrong way <laughs> and what's with, what's with these wings mm -hmm. or what's no what's with these platforms why do you need decks out so far this to the side this is gonna be terrible on the waves so probably a random waterbender on the docks when they reveal it someone like that because mm -hmm. i don't think any of, of team cora would make that particular assessment mm-hmm but that, but that's how they get from Republic City to back, back to the North Pole, and this is where you can have that particular, um, that particular conflict. Mm -hmm. um, I would say at the culmination of of that, um, Korra ends up entering that um, that amalgamation, and well, she has to to pull that to to purify the spirits that are there. Yeah, and ends up and ends up meeting um, Unalak in the pro in the process. You can ha you can have a a kind of spiritual um, fight scene back and forth with them, because the the other thing that I'm considering doing with this is that as it's moving, um, there are berserk spirits that are kind of are kind of shedding off of it like sh like shedding skin. Yeah, um, honestly, I don't I don't think that there needs to be a big action piece between Korra. And Unalak within the amalgamation. No, it's, um, no. With them, it's with them. It's just a back and forth discussion. Well, yes, I, I especially see Unalak at this point as being um, helpless. Mm -hmm. He's trapped. In, he's not only trapped inside the amalgamation. He's probably trapped inside his own body. Pretty, pretty, <laughs> mu pretty much. And I do, I do, I do suspect. I, I, sus I the angle that I suspect with this and the. The whole the whole angle with this discussion is is him is him having to gradually realize that he ended up causing this whole situation because of his own pride. Yes, um, we, we, especially when he sees uh, Korra struggling not only against all the berserk spirits, but she's not trying to destroy them; she's instead doing what she was taught. Are you like that's that's going to be the that's going to be the clinching point. She's performing the ritual he taught her in order to try and purify these raging spirits and send them back to the spirit world where they need to be. I would I um I would say I would say that um that 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 is 
that it, that what she ends up doing is isn't the isn't the same ritual that he did, but she figured out her she figured out her own version that she was able to integrate with her bending. Well, yes, but I'm saying what he taught her mm -hmm. the purification, not necessarily the exact same steps, but the fact that she is in, instead of destroying spirits to save the the human realm. She is instead trying to keep the balance by purifying the spirits and sending them back. Is something? Remember, he thought, well, she doesn't really believe in the balance. She doesn't really know spirits that well. She isn't. She is not sent. Uh, she is not. Uh, oh, excuse me. She she doesn't deserve her her position, mm -hmm. um, which, which was what started his whole spiral. the The fact that she is doing exactly what he thought she wouldn't do is going to be a sobering moment. Yeah. And event eventually that eventually that leads to the remaining the the remaining amalgamation to become purified. And um I'd say this is where we can ha I'd say in the aftermath of this this is where we can have one li one little si one little sight gag and that that be that being um that being when when the whole thing is purified they they're um they're they were at they're at the center of what was the head of the thing. Yeah, so they're like a thousand feet in the air now. A thousand feet in the air, right right above right above the right above the ocean. <laughs> Wee sploosh. And 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 um Una. And she has to say and she has to save him. Yeah. He's he's been he's <laughs> He can probably hardly move after all of that. Um, I would also say that in this case, uh, th this is a situation where I think he should survive. Yes. Um, but possibly in a state where he'll he'll be it's a, a disabled person essentially. Uh, I mean, kind of like how Korra was at the end of book one, except worse, and also doesn't suddenly get restored by the Avatar cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, book one, why do you have to disappoint me so? Um, yeah, the the I I would I would say um I would say what what ends what ends up ha what ends up happening is because because of what because of what he did. Not only will, mm -hmm. not only can not only can he not commune with spirits anymore, but spirits actively recoil in his presence. Yes, because he's he's seen as someone who, in, instead of communing, harmed the spirit world and the human world. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, I would I would say that because of this, it disqualifies him from being the Northern Tribe chief any longer. He, I'd I'd say he. <laughs> I mean, other uh, other. I was gonna say he recuses himself of, of yeah, that position. Uh, yeah, but I mean, other other than the whole fact that he nearly massacred the entire Northern Water Tribe, um, <laughs> mm -hmm. which would be enough for them to go, no, you you can't be our chief. You get to go to prison. Yeah. Um, just the fact that that he realizes his wrongs and and also the fact that he just can't do his duties any longer. Mm -hmm. Um. He's like, yo, uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna be a normal guy. Bye. Yeah. Um. I'd say I'd now. I'd say when I'd say when it. I'd say when it comes to. When it comes when it comes to when it comes to his, because I when it come when it came to the twins instead instead of them being his kids, I'd rather them just be his um students. Yeah. Um. um it would make more sense in a lot of different ways, and but I'd also, I, I would also, really like to change Desna and Eska. I don't like the way they act; they're terrible characters. I'd, pr I would, I would probably, I would probably have it that they are, de that they are devoted to their, um, to their master. In this case, uh, they were devoted to him until the point that he did this Legion thing. Mm -hmm. But then, when he realized he was wrong, there, they'll take care of him instead of him taking care of them, like it used to be. Yeah. Um, when when you mentioned him being disabled, why why do I have th why do I have this idea that he that in the process of all this he ended up losing the use of his legs? 
Well, because that was kind of my intention. Mm -hmm. um, the That many spirits, something's going to permanently go out of whack in your body. Yeah, hit, I'd... I'd say I'd say I'd say the um the way his the way his body had 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 been constantly transforming ended up ri ended up really screwing with his um with his body. Mm-hmm. So I also think that this means that his his bending suffers as a result too. But not like permanently gone, just you know, only the simplest things. Mm-hmm. Which means he can still skate his wheelchair across the ice. <laughs> I'm an asshole, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it takes one to know one. I'm glad you acknowledge that. But because but in but because because of that because of that um that's that I think would be a good I think would be a good capstone for um book t for book 2. I'd say I'd say um instead of in, I know it'd be tempting to have to have. I'd say they'd. I'd say that one of the other one of the um, one of the elders, when it comes to the Northern Water Tribe, would approach um, Korra about beco about becoming chief, and she would likely say no out of out of out of, out of just reflexively because that's not something that she can do. Yeah, the Avatar. The Avatar must remain neutral. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I think in the end, instead of deciding on a new chief, they decide to um, establish a council system. Possibly. No, that's something that can happen in our in our next time skip too. The decision yeah. between chief chieftain and, and councils. Mm -hmm. That brings us to book three, the red Lo the red lotus arc, where and, and I'd say this would be the this would be the ideal opportunity to ans to answer the question of. Why the hell did why the hell didn't the White Lotus ever teach her exorcism? Not not only that, this um, also gives us a chance to uh, contrast book two. Book two was very much Korra centric, as we just established, but that's also because it dealt with a very personal journey between what it means to be the Avatar, establishing balance between the worlds, mm -hmm. and how there are people who view many different things about that in different ways. Um, this is this because I I'm sure we're still going to get the Red Lotus involved. Yes. I mean, as as much as Zaheer is just a, mm, is a poor man's bane. Let's let, let's not even dance around it. Not, not just a poor man's bane. He's a very straw man anarchist. Uh, I mean, really straw man anarchist. Um. <clears throat> We we can fix that, and in fact, we will. But before we before we even think about fixing that, we need to we need to establish um, the new status quo for book three. Yes. So first, we don't have the harmonic convergence. So no spirit world encroaching on human world because that was dumb. That should never have been done. That was dumb. To be quite to be quite honest, the only. The only um the only harmonic convergence that I that I ever want to see is um Dalinar summoning Honor's perpendicularity. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, that's obscure enough that you're going to want to explain that for the class monk. <sighs> Dalinar is a Dalinar is a character in the Stormlight Archive who in his younger days, was known as the Blackthorn, and was more of a and acted more like a blood more like a um, barbarian warlord than a, that who who loved who loved who loved warfare than a politician because he because he left all the thinking to his brother. Um, but af after after a time in him and him becoming a him becoming a member of the Knights Radiant as a bondsmith. He had to. He had to become a politician, but a lot of people still knew him as the Blackthorn. And I'm I'm vastly simplifying, but eventually he ends up meeting up with o he ends up meeting up with Odium, who wants to, who is who is willing to get who is willing to just let him be let him embrace the thrill of the thrill of battle again and 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 get and. 
it and in and enjoy and enjoy who he was by giving by giving him his passion he refuses summons honors perpendicularity which is essentially a universal gate that keep, that keeps shifting around and in the process seals the the spirit known as the thrill in, into a, into a jewel i am vastly simplifying this anyone and you should all read the stormlight archive or listen to the graphic audio version um because i can i consider it some really damn good work from sanderson mhm mm and plus plus you get to plus you get to see po possibly the um the co the coolest kind of kind of fan kind of fantasy sword in the form of shard blades just remember yep. 10 heartbeats and then i can kick your ass um but that bring, that brings us to that brings us to one other thing that started to happen in book three that I that I want to know if you if you're go, if you're going to go with and that is um the 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 appearance of more airbenders among among cert, certain certain nonbenders becoming airbenders. Um. No, I do not think certain nonbenders should become. Out of the blue, airbenders. That didn't make any sense even with the harmonic convergence. That would make even less sense now. Um, I personally think that Tenzin uh, would have been scouring the world for descendants of air nomads that were no longer at the temples. Because let's let's be frank here, the air mad, uh, the air mad, the air nomad extinction. Um, or the Air Nomad Genocide, as the calendar knows it, AG, mm -hmm. <clears throat> is not... Uh, it doesn't make sense. Air Nomads clearly reproduced somehow. And it doesn't make sense that every Air Nomad would be able to airbend. We, we know that there are non-benders born to bending families. It happens. Mm -hmm. But they still carry the propensity to pass that bending down to other children. So, I think it's more likely, and honestly, I think that uh, this is something we probably should have established in book one, but didn't as much as we should have. Um, Tenzin's likely been scouring the Earth, looking for descendants of airbenders who either didn't show any bending when they were alive, but their children and their grandchildren did. Or um, airbenders who, let's be honest, also would have escaped the Fire Nation genocide because they were either not at the temples or just got away and hid really really well and really quickly. Because that's going to happen. Um, and has been finding them and gathering them and teaching them. Mm -hmm. Whether they're adults or whether they're children. Because mm -hmm. he's sure there's some adults who may have noticed, oh, sometimes when I wave my hand... I get a nice breeze, and it's not just like when you wave your hand in front of your face, and uh, and, and things like that. So I think something we, we should probably have established in book one, but uh, we'll make more prominent in book three, is Tenzin's uh, airbending uh, protégés and, and, and students have been growing quite mm -hmm. a bit, actually, over the years that Korra was training, and Korra went to Republic City, and fought off the siege of Republic City and over Korra's uh, rescuing the, the Northern Water Tribe from, from the legion of, of berserk spirits. Um, and so, you know, when we go back to Republic City and see Tenzin again, uh, she's going to ask why the, the, air, the Air Nomad Temple that's been built on the outskirts there has gotten so much bigger. She's like, why is it so much bigger? Because uh, that'll be one of the things she'll notice, considering mm -hmm. how different the architecture of an air nomad temple is compared to the rest of Republic City. Yeah. And then, of course, after she asks that and gets a small update about air about there being more airbenders, she's gonna be like, "Wait, this isn't why I came here. I came here to ask you and the White Lotus what the hell." You know. Mm-hmm. Because I imagine there's not going to be really a time skip between the end of book two, other than some talking in the Northern Water Tribe. 
and the beginning of book three getting back to to Republic City. Yeah, I'd I'd and when it comes to, when it comes to the, when it comes to this um this this particular thing because her because she's she she is essentially grilling um essentially grill essentially grill grilling the what grilling um him as a mem as a representative of the white lotus about mm -hmm. why why um why exorcism and why spirit arts were never brought were never brought up to her the entire time that she was traveling the, that she was traveling the world as a kid mhm mm i mean they were they were tra they were training her they were they spent she spent all those years um training to be a proper avatar and this was never brought up once yes that's um that's going to sting and because because of because of that i'd say i'd say that she um that she ends up she ends up meeting with some of the with some of the higher with some of the higher ups on on the food chain when it comes to the when it comes to the white lotus um now as far as the explanation as to why um there's a, there's a couple there's a couple of things that i'm considering one is the fact that a long time ago, this whole this whole spirit this whole spirit stuff was was tried, and it ended up backfiring hard. And t and two, because the the cop out answer is that they is that they didn't know is that they um is that that knowledge was lost to them as well. But I consider that a bit of a cop out, given how long the White Lotus has been in operation. Not to mention the fact that you know Iro, the the original Iro. Uncle Iroh mm -hmm. um, was a very spiritual person to begin with. There's no way the White Lotus wouldn't know about spiritualism, um, <clears throat> exorcism, and, and harmony with the spirits. So I the see. best explanation, I think, would be that uh, while they were aware of methods that spiritualistic, uh, different spiritualistic people and tribes on on their planet use including the northern water tribe uh, they didn't know if these any of these would be suitable for the avatar mm -hmm. and they didn't know if there was any way to teach them and of course cora deter you know cora determined that even with all the teachings of the water tribe what she had to do was incomplete and she had to she had to instead infuse it with a way to uh, combine with her her actual bending in order for the exorcism to work properly mm-hmm so, so there is a little bit of truth to what the White Lotus will tell her, that we didn't know if there was a method suitable for the Avatar, which to which her being pragmatic and not being like she's she's not she's not snapping and going impulsive here because of overstress, she'll go, but you still could have made the attempt. It's vital information as as part of my role being Avatar. This is something that I do need to know. Um, would you, in this situation, would you, uh, would you drop hints about the about um, ab about the pe about the people um who the people who tried who tried to use the, who tried to use the spirit stuff in the past being, um, being the Red Lotus. Or ac um, actually, actually scratch that because this is this is the thing that's tricky about the Red Lotus is that the the in the even the core the canon version is that the red lotus were a group were a group that was against the white lotus um operating more openly and th and thought that they thought that they sh and up and cooperating with rulers when they f when they felt that ru that rulers end up end up creating more problems than they solve um which Putting aside the fact that that's, that that's two um, that's two ideologies trying to kit bash into one, um, I'd I'd say I'd say I'd say the I'd say the stronger angle between those is um, is the re is the Red Lotus disapproving of um, of the of the more open nature that the White Lotus had. Um. <clears throat> so, ultimately. Uh, the ideology in in 
cannon that leads to the formation and splintering of the Red Lotus mm -hmm. is that they think that the uh, that all kinds of government are bad. They want to get rid of government entirely and borders. Um, what does that sound like to us, Monk? <laughs> Who have we heard say things like that in real life? I can't. I can't imagine what you're talking about. Once again, children, just remember, things like the Red Lotus or 1984, those are cautionary tales, not instruction manuals. Anyway, um, the, the, I think it, it all breaks down to um, a distrust in general of human judgment. Because part, part of what they wanted to do was part of what Unalak was trying to do in reopening the spirit portals. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so uh, at that point, I think we could instead expand it to just uh, distrust of human judgment and human decision making thinking that humans don't have the type of foresight and knowledge necessary by themselves to make such far-reaching decisions, and that it was only previously through the intermix of humans and spirits that better decisions could be made. Which is, because, um, I'd, say, I'd say that is a natural fit for one specific reason. Um, Zahir very much comes across like a religious fanatic. Yes. But, but that's also because he was radicalized as a teenager. <clears throat> and again, radicalized is sometimes used as a bud word, bu buzzword, but in this case, this is the actual uh, legitimate use of, a, of the word. He, he met a member of, of the Red Lotus, Unalak, when they had both just first joined, mm -hmm. and they almost immediately learned about, and this is in canon, the spirits of light and dark and Avatar 1, and that how somehow that brought imbalance to the world. Uh, and just building off of that, they, you know, they continue to to become more fanatical about how uh, the world needs both humans and spirits working together for it to be properly safeguarded and ushered for, uh, for the next generations. Mm -hmm. So much like any good zealot and any extremely terrifying villain, the best villains are usually those who believe they're right. Because they can justify anything they do as being the right thing for the ultimate conclusion. Yeah. Now, uh, the 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 approach that the approach that I think we'd go with is that getting ba getting back to that conversation earlier of you should of you should have at least tried, and they you'd probably have a remark of the last the last time we did the last time we did that it gave birth to an alt, it gave birth to a near monster. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's when you can have the white, the um, white lotus um, representatives um, do the exposition about Zahir. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead, instead of having him being able to discover freeform flight at the end of the at the end of the season, as as if that as if the whole becoming heir is some kind of enlightenment for him, I'd I'd go with the idea that he already that um that he already had it. That was that was the tip. That was the tipping point. That was the tipping point when it came to his ideology. And, mm -hmm. um, and and that's and that's when you can. That's when you can have. That's when you can have it. That um. That he. That he. What that he um, that, ah, in English English monk. After after a long grueling battle, they lock they locked him up in a in a prison next to next to a next to a volcano. And 
and yeah, and, and had him and had him constant and has and have him have him to wear special special outfits that are constantly put um putting pressure on certain pressure points so he so he's a, he's a, he effectively has his bending restrained. Essentially, can, can consider it like the uh, mix be, mix between chi blocking and a straight jacket. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that, like they did with the other members of the Red Lotus, um, the part of the volcano he's in, likely due to the different uh, levels of heat, causes air currents to always be unpredictable and thus um, much harder to be bent. Mm -hmm. Which keeps him from taking off his straight jacket even further in the event that somehow he can get past some of the bits of chi blocking in order to bend it all. Yeah. But that brings us to how we'd have him break out. Because initially, he broke out because he was one of the people lucky enough to develop airbending. That was a fucking Diabolus Ex Machina in the making. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think it, I think it's I think instead um, I wanted to I want to take a bit of a note from Magneto's breakout in X Two. Helper who an unwitting helper. Yeah. I'd I'd say I'd say what I'd say what ends up what ends up happening is um so is some someone someone gets man, someone gets manipulated into get into getting a bit too close and he's a, he's able to use that to do the whole to do the whole drain drain air fr, drain air from someone and 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 um get and get himself just a tiny bit free and that's enough mm -hmm. to that's enough to allow him to break free of his restraints and um get and get out. Mhm. Mm Since re remember you've got somebody who effectively has perfect flight, not wind riding full on superman style flight. Yeah. And uh I I'd also like to 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 note that he would never ever be able to blend in at Air Temple Island. No, Tenzin not... being being a a a, a <laughs> liaison of the White Lotus would immediately understand who he is. Well, he'd pro he'd probably be well aware of he'd probably look at um at say here as the, as as the he who shall not be named when it comes to Airbenders. Mm-hmm. And no, I'm I'm not using. I know, I know. I always do. I know. I always bring up the whole read another book when it comes to ma people making Harry Potter comparisons. But this is a case where it where it's legit, where it legitimately applies with with how with how um, I'm pretty sure a lot of a lot of um air nomads around that time would be significantly afraid of Zaheer because of how powerful he was. Yeah. And you can you can probably go even you can probably even go a step further that he was involved in the operation to try and restrain the Red Lotus. But I'm just go ahead, really go ahead. surprised Henry Rollins voiced him to be honest. Well, given given the look, it doesn't surprise me all that much. Although, although I feel bad for Henry R. Rollins in that case. But let me. Oh, good. I was just gonna say. Well, I mean, I <sighs> nothing. I, I'm. I. That's way too rails. All right. Now that that being that being said, he d once he breaks himself out, he does he does break out his um his collaborators, obviously. Mm hmm. And in the and um that and. It doesn't take long before news before news breaks out that um that the Red Lotus has escaped, and the, and thus you ha and I'd say I'd say the approach I, the approach that I'd go with this is that initially, um the mindset is keep keep uh, make sure to keep the avatar safe and Core is like I'm not I'm not doing that this is my, this is my this is part of my job, and go and goes off goes off to try and goes off to try and find him. Yeah. Um which and which um I'd I'd say I'd say in this kind of approach the collaborators all decide to go off to try and assassinate the um assassinate the re the respective leaders of the of the um of the four nations. 
and and po and possibly um possibly the rulership of Republic City as well. And because 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 of that, this is where you can ha I'd say this this would be a situation where you kind of have a race against time situation. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't ha I wouldn't have them all go in groups. I'd have them each um split into their own their own separate um part parties of, of themselves and and a and a few representatives okay i can see how that'll work um because ha having having them jump between nation to nation as a group is is going to, with with the same level of tension would get repetitive really quickly mm -hmm. and um cool i'd say i'd say in the i'd say in this um situation instead of having them go to their respective elements um i'd have I'd have Korra go go to the Earth Kingdom. Um, I'd say I'd say um. Both I'd say um, Asami and Mako going to the, going to the Fire Nation. And um, Bo Bolin and Bolin and the twins go going 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 up and down from the between the um, water tribes. Okay. Um. Which speak, speaking of that, I think I think this is as good a time as any to just to figure out whether or not we're going with that whole, um, that whole council or a new chief. For the for the north. So I think that should actually be a, a stumbling block for that group, that as part of them searching between the two water tribes, uh, when they arrive at the northern water tribe. Uh, the the debate is still ongoing, mm -hmm. and uh, the twins are pulled into that debate because of their uh, their master. Which which once again we have a situation where where someone's getting pulled into a situation they were they were not trained for. Yes, it you know mirrors we we've got mirrors and reflections everywhere because that's part of how life works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and of course, Bolin, being the one helping them, is going to try his best to help them. Remember, this Bolin is less is less comedic relief than he was in the show, where he was the butt of most jokes. Mm -hmm. He's still he's still you know a joker. He still attempts to be the funny guy, the happy face, from time to time. But he isn't you know like like you said, he's the Alphonse. He's trying to keep things a little little more. Um, measured as well mm -hmm. rather than being hot-headed um and he he uses humor to his his best effect that way mm -hmm. so we're probably gonna get like with with their part of the search we're probably gonna get a few gags um just because bolin's gonna try and smooth things out keep things from getting too stressful um this will also help humanize the twins further because let's be frank with as stoic and weird as they acted, they acted super un inhuman. Like it was, it was honestly, they didn't feel like Unalak's ch children in the uh, original canon. <clears throat> e even if the explanation was just that they were taught to be very stoic, you do not act that way with other people. Period. End of story. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is going to serve to humanize them further. Maybe this will give a chance for for Bolin and Eska to have a real relationship rather than I own you. You're going to marry me because I said so. Don't don't you know that no means no, bitch. <laughs> don't you know that? Um, and essentially, it's it's going to. Uh, help to make that decision. Ultimately, I think the decision should be a council. Mm -hmm. um, if only because an outsider like Bolin makes the observation in, in whatever his joking manner is going to be that you guys can't agree on a leader. What makes you think a leader will be someone you'll agree with? Mm-hmm. Instead, you should discuss things as a council. I'm sure there are people with enough viewpoints that can come to a compromise sort of situation. Um, and of course, the twins are going to come up 
with him and, and be like, yeah, we're all vastly different people here, but we all get along despite having different views on things. Maybe you should try that too. And then, of course, in the end, uh, Bolin's going to say, and it works really well in Republic City. Even the Avatar loves it there because of the fact that people work together. Yeah. So they're going to get a lesson. They're going to get a lesson. I, 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 I hate to say it this way, Monk, because apparently we just we just did it. Mm-hmm. We gave them a lesson in the power of friendship. I'm going I'm going to need I'm going to need to take I'm going to need to take a cold shower after this, aren't I? <laughs> I mean, at least we didn't do it with ponies, so I think we're still good. Okay, we're okay, I'm fine and I can probably I can probably hear Flutter guy sneezing in the background. <laughs> Flutter's going to tell me what the hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> um but with, and speaking of that when it comes to when it comes to Asa, when it comes to Asami in As, Asami and uh, Mako in the in the Fire Nation I'd Zuko they en, they end up obviously there's the whole meeting with thumbs um, with Zuko and and um the the uh, and the meeting with General Iroh as well um at the same time they're all having tea yeah um and 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 Zuko will probably make a snide remark of at least you guys can drink tea because we got to call back to our Nekojita jokes. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure in this kind of situation, um, As- um, Asami would probably say, D- "I heard, I heard, Cor- I heard Cor likes her, Cor- likes her school." And just just before she just before she ends up finishing that sentence, she gets elbowed by M- by Mako saying, "Don't." <laughs> You know, a bit, a bit, because we've 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 effectively had it that these two are that these two are have been have been dating for have been dating for quite a while. It's only it's and it's only a matter of time before they get hitched. Yeah. Um, and because and because of that, there there is that there is that kind of um, Abbott and Costello of the two of the two of them playing off each other. Mm-hmm. And of course, of course, some. Um, General Iroh d- doesn't doesn't re- doesn't really ca- um knows knows about the whole tea thing, but he doesn't really care. <laughs> um, it's only Zuko who cares because of General Iroh's namesake, yeah. Uncle Iroh. Um, but I I would probably have that the conflict between them is that um, Zuko Z- Zuko does um fe- feels that it feels that he feels that um. The, that um because of all the times that he's been that he's had assassination attempts brought on him that it that he'd be able to handle this whereas Iro completely disagrees. You're not a young man anymore. How dare you talk to me that way? You you made me general because I talked to you this way. <laughs> um, we, we can probably th- we can probably throw in Commander Boomy to to act as to try and act as um intermediary and being terrible at it. As expected of anyone with the namesake Boomy, um, like I'm, pr- I'd probably have the approach of, of him going, gentlemen, gen- gentlemen, gentlemen, we need to, s- we need to settle this civilly. Both of you in, both of you in the arena in five minutes. We'll, s- you can settle it out with firebending. And, ev- ev- and, ev- and of course, with that kind of situation, um, Asami and Mako are like, are like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, because because the co- the classic bit of comedy is the is the good old bait and switch. So you think you think Boomy is going to show up to try and ca- to try and calm the try and calm the father and son down, but no, he's encouraging it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as far as why he's encouraging it, because one, it's funny, and two, and two, the two of them the two of them are the two of them are unfortunately two similar people in that they're both bullheadedly stubborn. And three, he knows that a little bit of firebending between father and son never goes wrong when you're not Ozai. <laughs> well, he f- that and he that and he figures they're gonna they're gonna end up start they're gonna end up starting a fight anyway. So better to do it in a place that isn't gonna get wrecked again. True. Like, 
I'm going with the idea that uh, instead of, instead of instead of the daddy issues that Boomy had, it's it's more of a case of Commander Boomy is is ve is very good at his job, but he also has a propensity for liking to stir shit up just to see what happens. He's me. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, you set it up. I hate that I I hate that I did, and I hate that you're right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good old Boomy. He it he is he is the ex he is the exact kind of person who would um would pull pr would pull pranks on on rec on recruits in boot camp. I'll put I'll put it that way. That is that is the kind of person I see our version of um Boomy being. Brilliant, and I but, still <laughs> brilliant, but a bastard. Brilliant, but a bastard. Loves his family. I still think we need to keep the joke where he where he promises tens in twenty four seven boomy time. <laughs> at some point, um, I also think that he should not have inherited uh, the airbending abilities uh, like he did from Harmonic Convergence, but uh, got water bending from his mom. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sorry, but being named. After Aang's best friend and uh, the craziest fucking earthbender ever, mm -hmm. and uh, and having water bending would just be hilarious because he could make jokes about look, Ma, I'm earthbending. There's a t there's a tidal wave because I did, <laughs> and Katara being like, Boomy, I know that's not because of an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know he'd do it. Yeah. You know he'd do it. So well, uh, this. Playing off of that, given that we given that we'd have this kind of scene of um, of Iro and Zuko um, fi Zuko firebending, and um, I think it, I think it would be an amusing twist if um, if Iro ended up learning ended up learning blue ended up learning um, blue fire, but is he's just but is it's not a case of him being crazy. He's just extremely precise when it comes to his bent when it comes to his bending. I. I'd also I'd also probably add that he uses a saber, whereas Zuko insists on using. He uses a um a a standard captain's saber, whereas Zuko is Zuko is still using it is trying to still use his twin sabers even at his age. Mm hmm. Which he's still damn good at. Yeah, he's st so you you effectively got you effectively got one guy with a um. I'd actually instead of a saber, I'd actually say that um, given given the theming. Um, General Iroh has a Jian as as mm -hmm. his, as his firebending weapon of choice. A mm -hmm. Jian, and the other reason I'd go with Blue Fire is just to differentiate there, just to uh, make sure that it, there's at least some color variety, so you know who's throwing what. Well, um, I mean, it, it also is described as hotter in the show, so. Mm -hmm. Um. I think it would also uh, show that, like father, like son, they both try to exceed at the things they do. Yeah, and event eventually, the, eventually the two of them end up end up tiring themselves out and and decide decide to compromise and to hug it out. And no, 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 <laughs> no, better. The two of them are are still trying to make one or the other see their point. Uh, their fire bending starts getting more and more excessive as they're just they're trying to get their point across. They're not actually trying to hurt each other, but as we know, the emotions of, of a firebender do affect their fire bending. Mm -hmm. And then Boomy Water bends a river on top of them. I, I was just gonna go with I was just gonna go with the whole thing of him of him dump of him dumping dumping. Dumping the equivalent of buckets of water on both of them to, well, cool them off. Yes, but I think he should do it as they're as we get this climactic Sakuga fight of firebending because the firebending fights are almost always very fucking pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, and as it looks like they're about to go beyond what they should for a friendly duel, like fists are about to hit each other's faces and. And fire is about to re actually burn away skin, whatever it might be. Uh, they get water dumped over them, and Boomy goes, "Yes, yes, we understand. You're both very passionate. Come, cool your jets. 
This is not an Agni Kai, you idiots. Agni Kais have been outlawed according to you, Lord Zuko. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you tried turning this into one. Boomy being boomy. Mm -hmm. Of course, they both, we, we get the sight gag of water over the, the bodies and then blinking because that sight gag is classic. Yes. And then they both give him, you know, the flat glare of, God damn it, Boomy. <laughs> but, um... We are kind of know, turning Boomy into the Avatar version of a troll face, but he always was. He always was, and he didn't have enough screen time to just show how much he could be one. Mm -hmm. So That's my conclusion. Yeah. And if he's anything like his namesake, who was also a massive troll, <laughs> uh then, yeah, if he lives up to his namesake, I hope he exceeds his namesake. Yeah. Now, my, my, my best question is, are we still going to have Miss Earth Queen die to the Red Lotus? Um, I am... That, that, is, that is where we get to the other thing, because you, you, mentioned, you mentioned the whole thing with, with what, the Avatar was do, what the Avatar was doing when, when, we, met, when we brought up the um, Northern Water Tribe situation. Um, that would be that would be a good segue to that to that where she um she and she ends up, she ends up arriving at Ba Sing Se, and imme and immediately the and immediately the military is there is there to is there to greet her, and not in a friendly way. Nope, we're nope we're talk we're talking we're talking full stones raised. Because for one, and they're they're on they're on the mindset of. Anybody who anybody who's an outsider is get is getting pelted on is getting pelted on sight, and two. Um, the fact the fact that the Avatar spends so much of her time in Republic City really pisses her, really pisses the Earth Queen off. And of course, the uh, the Avatar Korra, she's just gonna raise her head and say, "Do you really? Do you guys really want to do it this way?" <laughs> Well, when it, when it comes to the soldiers, it's a case of we've we we don't like it either, but we've got we've got our orders. See, seize her, and that that's when you can have a case of <sighs> you guys asked for this, and she stomps them all down with earth bending alone, just because she feels a little overconfident after the spirit thing, and also because she thinks it'll be it'll get the best message across. Well, that and it's a case of I am I I do not want I do not want any part of this shit. Yeah. Um. I'd I'd say I'd say it's a I'd say it's a bit I'd say it's either a bit of stomping or a bit of surprise hole in the ground. I think it's going to be surprise hole in the ground, under them. Yeah. Here, sinkhole. Bye, guys. It's at that point that the daily ap approach. Mm -hmm. Is just be just because just because the just because the man behind that program was was um t was dealt with doesn't doesn't mean that um Dai Li tra Dai Li training wasn't still wasn't still a thing. It's just that they're just that the brainwashing thing stopped. And of course that that's when you can that's when when it comes to the Dai Li showing up. That's when it's a case of yeah yeah all right bring me. Bring me to the queen, and yeah. um, I am still having it. I'm still having it that the Earth Queen is a bitch. For for two reasons: one, um, because of the because of because of the fact that she in, that she um in, that she inherited that she inherited the t the title and has to and has to deal with all the other um all the other fiefdoms in the Earth Kingdom. She's overcompensating. And two, um, she ha she has this she has the mindset of the um the territories uh, the territories under Republic City should have gone should have gone back to the Earth Kingdom. Mm. Um. Yeah. Okay. Now, something I think we should actually keep that's going to make relations a little more strained especially once it's all discovered um is 
since we already established that, that airbenders are going to be have been have been coming around far longer than before harmonic convergence because genocides can never really work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Dai Li should still have been secretly imprisoning airbenders to train them as part of the Queen's army. Which is why Tenzin has been having such trouble finding them in the first place. And as far as far as as far as the the approach that I'm the approach that I'm going with when it comes this might sound a bit straw many, but the approach that I'm going with when it comes to the Earth Queen is she has the mindset of the Earth King the Earth Kingdom is my possession and what and it and it is with and it is my right to as queen to to utilize its resources as I see fit. Mm-hmm. I know that I know that sounds a bit straw many, but it but it's too it's too. But there's I have plans for a payoff when it comes to this. Yeah, she's she's a she is your typical Nero fiddling on the rooftops. Mm-hmm. And the the other reason that I'm going with this is that is that um that the that that Cora is tra- Cora is trying to make clear to her there's an assassin coming from the Red Lotus he's go he or she is going to come he or she is going to come here and is going to try and kill you mm-hmm. to which the queen says oh how could he possibly here how could they possibly get to me how could they possibly get through the strongest uh the strongest nation on all of uh, you know blah 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 just she's clearly going to be a bit deluded about who's the best mm-hmm and Cor- and Cora having the mindset of just give me I'm a, I'm a, I'm a smack this woman I'm a smack her Cor- Cora's face is going to get uh, remarkably more and more, what's the best way, wooden, to where she's not expressing emotion, just keeping a very neutral look on it. As uh, this uh, this lady continues to rant and rave about how no assassin could ever get to her, and how she doesn't need the Avatar to tell her how to, you know, tell her how to protect herself, and how the Avatar is outdated and overrated and we don't need the avatar and bossing say and in the earth kingdom um then, she, then just as a bit of a callback you can, you can probably have Cora say something to the extent of weren't you the one who sent weren't you the one who sent a dozen delegates after after the siege <laughs> weren't you the one who sent a bunch of delegates after after it was revealed who the who the avatar was yeah, just something you know, slapping her in the face with her stupidity, and and after that, getting literally th- getting literally thrown out of the palace. Mm-hmm. With with a uh, with the whole thing of well, that went well, that could have gone better. Um, in in the end, Cora did what she had to do. Uh, you know, voiced her her um her warning but Korra knows that as the avatar she cannot force one of the world leaders to do anything that would be seen as a potential sign of aggression by other world leaders to the point of they might think that the avatar has uh designs on taking over the world mm-hmm. um it's i mean it's obviously Zuko wouldn't think that and probably neither would the water tribe. It'd really just be the rest of the world besides <laughs> besides the fire and water tribe. It'd just be the Earth Kingdom thinks that she's trying to take everything over. Mm-hmm. And eh, I would say that I would say that shortly after she after the after she makes her way out of the outer gates of, of the palace, that's that's when she hears the same woman who berated her um, screaming. And it's like, oh sh! And that's the oh shit moment, and just ba- and just barrels back in. You, yeah, you not, ignoring the rest of the Daily agents who are now throwing rock hands at anybody, anybody, and everybody. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> when it comes when it comes to when it com- but when I'm when I say go- she's making a beeline f- for the for the queen, it's let's uh, even the um even those same Daily agents that were trying that were trying to restrain her, it doesn't even it doesn't even phase. Yeah. Like she's a, uh, she's she's dashing as fast as she can, mm-hmm. probably with some uh, assistance from wind power. Yeah. Um, and 
the 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 rock hands just cannot keep up. The one the ones the ones that do, the ones that do don't even don't even don't even phase and they can't and they can't hold it for after against that amount of power. Mm-hmm. Um. Eventually, eventually she d eventually she does get she does get back to the throne room, where is the where is the here and I'd say in this case that's where Zaheer is. Um. And I would I would I would say that um. That th that as a there's a kind of 180 here, where origin originally the originally the queen was was all was all was all full of pride about about the strength of about the strength of that army, then she um. She re she reveals she reveals her trump card in terms of in terms of the um airbenders that she has under that she has under her thumb. Mm -hmm. You know as a as a la as a thinking ah this will be this will be my trump this will be my trump card in case in case the here did show up mm -hmm. and the um obviously with that even though the even though the here is more powerful than them um it's a case of you don't you don't um you don't try and do an assassination when you're outnumbered so he yeah. he ends up he ends up retreating of course avatar Korra is here to uh Witness the fact that the Earth Queen has enslaved Airbenders, and um, you know, you know, I meant, you know, I mentioned that when I mentioned earlier about that whole thing with the slap. Yeah, that's when we get. That's when we get this. <laughs> See, friends, remember how we said that this uh, that this is heavily inspired by Wuxia. There's this. There's this common trope in Wuxia, both figurative and literal. Called face slapping. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is when Korra, angry beyond all belief, stressed out because there was Zaheer, but she couldn't get him, and uh, pissed off to see so many airbenders imprisoned and shackled as. Earth, they're they're, cons they're conscripts. They're mm -hmm. Earth, they're they're Earth, Earth Kingdom's con conscripts. Yeah. Marches right up to the queen, slaps her across the face, to which the queen, of course, acts in complete shock and awe. Gives her the diatribe about imprisoning and enslaving others, mm -hmm. and says, "Don't look to us for help next time." Then frees all of the Earth ben or all of the Airbenders from the from the Dai Li and from the rest of the Earth Kingdom, and says, "Come on, we're we're taking you we're taking you someplace safe." Yeah. Um. And this is when you get an exodus of of Airbenders from the from Bossing Say. Um. Now I I know I I know I said I I know I said I wouldn't kill the Earth Queen, but um, I, what I should have said is I would I wouldn't do it yet. This it. Because, as as you see, a significant exodus of air of airbenders and airbending aspirants, oh, out of um out of Bossing Say and subsequently out of the Earth out of the Earth Kingdoms and head heading to, um, the ever the ever expanding Tenzin Island. <laughs> um, yep, Air Temple Island is now Tenzin Island just because we want to. Yeah. Also, Boomy, mm -hmm. Boomy did that. It's Boomy's fault. <laughs> He's, he's 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 created a colloquial name of that's Tenzin Island. My brother lives there. And of co of course, Tenzin did not consent to this name change at all. Well, it, on on Republic City maps and zoning uh, documents, it is still shown to be Air Temple Island. This is Boomy going around Republic City, going, you know, that island out there with all them Airbenders. That's where my little brother Tenzin lives. That's Tenzin Island. <laughs> And unfor unfortunately, because Boomy is such a force of personality, the name stuck. Yes, I, I felt we needed more Boomy in our lives, so I, mm. I put more Boomy in. <laughs> that and um, Tenzin in Tenzin in the show was a was a was a stiff neck and nothing else. In this case, we're going with the fact that he's a stiff neck because every because everybody else in his family is fucking crazy. Yep, he's the straight man in a in a family of what the fucks. Mm -hmm. He takes after his mom that way. And pretty, even only sometimes. Pretty much. Um, 
It doesn't. It doesn't certainly help that 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 a couple of his kids are just as much tr are just as much troublemakers as his fa as his father was was as a kid. Um, well, that's air nomads for you. But with but with that in with that in mind, the the approach the approach that I have is that she, she ends up retreating to her to her quarters, still seething over being humiliated. And um, when she when she ends up when she ends up turning on ends up turning on the lamp, um, she sees Zaheer there. Who's who's back because he did because he didn't finish the job, and that's when he ends he ends up he ends up putting her out of commission. Mm hmm. No. Instead instead of her instead of Zaheer just sudden they're suddenly doing the deed. It's a case of. Um, of her, of Zaheer, Zaheer effectively being the angel of death in this situation, taking her out at her at her low point. I think yeah. I think that would have a lot more um, drama to it. It would, and not to mention it's it's in a in a small private, uh, close encounter, mm -hmm. rather than just being done in the middle of the throne room after kicking Daily ass. Yeah. Uh, this this feels more methodical, mm -hmm. strategic, thought out. Now, which gives us a nice foil as an antagonist along the same mental capacity as Korra. Yeah. Now, when it com when it comes to the other assassination attempts on the kings, those <laughs> ones are um, I'd say I'd say are not going to be successful. They they, um, end, up get they end up getting driven back. Well, I I think not only that because it's gonna be it's gonna be one of each member, right? Mm -hmm. Zaheer went to the Earth Kingdom. Uh, we'll say, um, oh, what was her name? Z. Are you talking about the armless woman with the water whips? No, the combustion bender. Ah, I'd say I'd say um, I'd say he I'd say he and I'd say he ends up she going, she ends up because she was she was um Zaheer's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I'd say she. I'd say she ends up going to the to the. Um, I'm I'm thinking the I'm thinking the Fire Nation. Oh, Plea. Her name is Plea. Plea. Excuse me. Yeah, okay. Minghua is the is the um, water bender with no arms. Mm -hmm. And Gazan is is the lava bender. Yeah, it's been it's been a while, but one of the things I do want to maintain is that is that Kazan ends up getting into a, ends up getting into a fight with um, Bolin, and. Bol Bolin might Bolin might be a bit more innocent than his brother, but he but he is very he is very adept at thinking on his feet, and yes, he and and in that fight he ends up figuring out how to do lava bending himself. I think instead of figuring out you know totally as a sight gag as it was originally done, I think he figures it out because he starts manipulating the earth in Gazan's uh, lava bending to try and force it away. Mm -hmm. Uh, again and again, and he starts to understand that the lava, the actual heated part of the lava, is just more earth. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's sort of this mental switch, and uh, then he then he and Gazan are basically playing tug of war with lava at that point. And yeah. um, the twins who are with with Bullen are helping by, uh, well, doing what they do best: water bending. Mm -hmm. I'd I'd say I'd say um I'd say you can probably have a combo that involves a smokescreen tactic, you know, water um cooling trying to cool down his trying to cool down his lava to create a whole lot of um smoke, and the, and then and then um and then using using that to their advantage. Yeah. Um. When it when it comes to now when it comes to our when it comes to Miss Combustion, um. You would, th you would think you would think that there that there would be a bit of a dis that there would be a bit of a disadvantage, um, put having that having having putting that putting her up against against someone who one um isn't a isn't a bender but relies on a lot of gadgetry and two someone who prefers um hand to hand instead instead of bending. So that would be them against Minghua then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the 
the approach that I'm considering when it com when it comes to when it comes to that fight is is that they is that they end up um they en they end up they end up out they end up outwitting because because when it comes to combustion it, it's a it's hyper focused on one particular area you can't and you can't see in two places at once okay we're talking about plea then got it um mm -hmm. yeah uh i can see them outwitting her and not having you know uh so yin beifong melt or uh, metal bend around her head so she explodes her own face yeah uh, although that was that was quick thinking i'm not gonna lie she uh she uh she she did that really well she's like oh you're wearing a metal chest plate here have a have a coffin for your head um I'd also, I'd also, I'd also go in a situation that this is, this is one of the rare, this would be one of the rare cases where, um, Ma where Mako, not only actively is b is bending in this particular battle, but um, decides to use lightning. Which would work. Um, I know that in canon he killed the Waterbender Minghua by lightning bending because, well, she wears water. Mm -hmm. Conductive. But uh, yeah, against Plea, I could see him using lightning bending to try and uh, make her combustion bending harder too. Mm -hmm. And give now the whole the whole thing is that um, after after the after the fact that only one of them managed to succeed in their in their um, task, they end up re they end up reconvening and deciding to, and deciding to instead. Instead, um, all four of them target the Avatar, which, as good as good as Korra is, she's st she's still out she's still outgunned by four people far more experienced than her. Unless she were to somehow activate the Avatar state, mm -hmm. which she still hasn't been able to do consciously. Yeah, and um, I w I would say that when it came to her doing that beeline, that was her borderline tapping into it but not but not completely going not completely going over and because of the fact that she that she doesn't like losing she doesn't like overdoing it or losing control um the idea of using the avatar state just wouldn't really occur to her and this is going to be important in a minute because um should should we keep that whole thing where they try and use um mercury on her no cuz that would that would um That wouldn't that wouldn't be uh, necessary in this particular version. Uh, Arza here is on the same mental capacity as as Korra. He may still be um, somewhat fanatic, but even he would have heard of by the time that this all occurs the fact that she, instead of destroying a bunch of spirits to stop Unalak purified them and returned them to the spirit world as is intended and mm -hmm. in it which would probably lead zahir to believe that maybe given proper uh ev quote-unquote evidence quote-unquote arguments the avatar could still be turned to the side of the red lotus in, a, in an abolishment of of human government mm -hmm. and a combination government between spirits and humans for the betterment of mankind I think this should be more. Um, he essentially the wants a theocratic state. Not even a theocratic state. He wants. Um, I mean, this would actually probably be a more literal theocratic state, considering that this time the gods would be living among you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but it, 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 it's beyond even that, though. He wants. He wants the theocratic state that you mentioned. He also wants to. But he, 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 he's, his whole point is that humans wouldn't be neglected. They'd be a part of the process as well. He just thinks that humans should not be the only process. Mm -hmm. um, and on, on top of that, he thinks that she can be convinced. So I want this to be the... Um, the unlike with Amon, where we, did, where we did he tried the we're not so different you and I thing and mm -hmm. failed... Um, this is going to be the, more the Zaheer of, you do the things we already like, you're just not taking the final step. And, you know, to to her, the final step is 
to imbalance things. To him, the final step is to bring things back into balance. Mm-hmm. He's going to be like, it's a matter of perspective. What you consider balanced, we consider imbalanced. Mm-hmm. He's not going to try and say they're the same. He's going to instead focus on the differences and convince her that those differences are where she is wrong, or attempt to convince her. And I, I would, I would say when it comes to this that it, it does eventually wear on her, but, um, in, but in that, in that low moment, that's when she ends, she ends up, um, she ends up hearing, hearing the voice of the, of the past incarnations. She's going. I, it's going to start with Aang, mm-hmm. because it always starts with the soonest Avatar, at least the, almost the very first time. Mm-hmm. Roku was the first one that uh, Aang really ever talked to when he was summoned to the Fire Temple. Mm-hmm. Um, Aang, Aang's point is probably going to be, I can't tell you the right path here. All I know is that I wanted to protect the people that I loved. And it brought me on a different path from any other avatar before me. Mm-hmm. And I'd say, I'd say when it comes, when it comes to, when it comes to, when it comes, when it comes, when it comes and he'd, she'd probably end up getting similar um, pep talks from from Roku and um, and Kiyoshi and pre- and previous ones. Basically, I think the- in this case, though, mm-hmm. we should actually have her talk to Avatar One. We've already changed our one a lot. He's no longer an idiot. Mm-hmm. I think that she should have a very long talk with Avatar One, and the uh, the path of all of these discussions that she's having with the avatars, while the details of their stories are different, mm-hmm. the crux of the story is the same, and. Here, here comes another. You might actually need a cold shower after all of this, monk. Try um, me. That ultimately, the avatar protects the world due to their love for it. Yeah. <laughs> whether that's the love of their country and countrymen, whether that's the love of their family and friends. Whether it's the love of the world itself and the marvelous places and beings within it, the Avatar protects the world and its balance out of the love for both the human world and the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you you, you might need a cold shower after all. (laughs) Wash all all the shame away. (laughs) Oh wait, you can't shame that which is seamless. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. But the, and, and Avatar 1 would go into a little more detail with that. He'd be like, the entire reason that the spirit, the spirit of, of the Earth, or whatever we've now established as what started the Avatar cycle, the entire reason that I took up this mantle was that there needed to be somebody out there who would love the world beyond their own small tribes. You know, and he realized that since no one else was doing it, he'd have to. And, and thus the Avatar cycle began. Because mm-hmm. um, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into, I wouldn't go into a whole lot of detail on how Juan became the Avatar, but yeah, but more of more of a acknowledgement that when he ma- when he made this decision, um, he no longer he. It was a realization that he was no longer going to be Juan as he was. Yeah, that he was going to be beyond just the person and was instead going to be someone that everyone had to rely on in the end. He was, he was essentially gearing himself up for the responsibility of all humans and all spirits and everything in between. Mm-hmm. Which is... Not a light responsibility by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I think in that moment, Korra will have her counter argument to Sahir. You know, she'll come up with some po- some points like, if the spirits really didn't think that the decision was a wise one, 
they would have asked Avatar 1 for, con for conference and confirmation. But it's clear that the spirits like where they're at, and the humans like their own world. Mm -hmm. They still work together in tandem. The spirits are still revered, and humans still feel their presence. But it's clear that both are happier where they are now. And, you know, Zaheer's, Zaheer's diatribe is eventually going to start breaking down. He's going to start getting a little upset and, uh, and angry that she's rebutting him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, eventually she's going to say, the, 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 the thing that we have done with every villain so far, and we'll probably do with every villain until Kuvira, uh... You don't realize that in attempting to assassinate all of all authority and establish a world with none, you have put yourself in the position of authority and become that which you hate. Mm -hmm. So in short, book three, friendship and love save the day, guys. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Um, but that, that brings us to, um, Book four, which is which is all about Kuvira's campaign to try and to try and unify all of the Earth Kingdoms under her banner, um, which includes reannexing Republic City. Yeah, and I'd I'd say um I'd say at f obviously we're um throughout this we're not do we're not doing that whole thing of of um I'd before we get to that I'd say first off. At the climax of her battle with with Sahir and the, and the Lotus, she does finally unlock the Avatar state. In a conscious manner, yes. She she can reach the Avatar state, which allows her to deal with Miss. I blow up things with my mind. Miss. I have water whips for arms. Mister Lava, mm -hmm. and and Zaheer. Um, pretty easily because it's the Avatar state. Unbound, unchained, and and completely within her control, which also gives another realization to Korra that the Avatar state is not a state of lost control, but a state of heightened control, mm -hmm. which really appeals to her sensibilities. Yeah. <laughs> um. It also brings another another bit of character maturity to Korra. She realizes that allowing her emotions to guide her but not rule her is a lot is is perfectly reasonable mm -hmm. she doesn't have to hold them hold them in and rein them back so much mm -hmm. um now in the get in the gap between books three and four are we do are we doing a case of there's no time jump or are we doing a bit of a time jump we're still doing a bit of a time jump because uh you're gonna have to deal with the the aftermath of the fight with the Red Lotus, mm. whether they survive or not. Um, I'd I'd say I'd say I'd say they are they're cer they're they're certainly badly beaten, but they're um but they're put but they're put back in they're put back in jail. Um, okay, um, and this time Zahir is put in the type of jail that we see him in in book four because that would keep him from even doing an X two, mm. um, and. Uh, then Kuvira has to take the time to build up to the point where she was at anyway. Um, but because because Korra does not disappear off the face of the fucking planet for three years, mm -hmm. um, the rest of Team Korra does not split up. You know, you don't have her splitting up. You don't have her. You don't having. You don't have her. Going through PTSD as as if that's some substitute for character development, and um, probably don't ha probably don't have her cutting her cutting her hair. No, she probably keeps her hair loopies um, because honestly, those were better than her fucking short ass haircut. Mm -hmm. That was one of the cool parts of her uh, of her character design. Um, I would say that at this point, the twins have permanently joined as members of Team Avatar, and. I can see that with our changes to everything, that Bolin and, and Eska actually have a, their own burgeoning romance. And uh, Mako and Asami notice, and Mako and Asami, uh, Mako's kind of kind of proud of his little bro. 
And I'm pre I'm pretty sure in in this kind of thing, um, Bo um, Bolin is completely beat red about it, or or keep or keeps trying to keeps trying to downplay it. He tries to play oblivious because that's what Bolin does best. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> and and that's going to be you know a little point of of joking between him and Eska as well. Yeah. Like like he's probably already explained to Eska. If I admit to it, we will never hear the end of it. <laughs> we will never hear the end of it. Because Eska will never hear the end. Will never hear the end of it from 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 the other half of that situation. And Bolin will never hear the end of it from his big brother. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Although we we can we can guess that her that her brother has already uh has already guessed. Is already has already has already guessed and it and is um is already po is already poking fun at is already poking fun at her for it. Yeah. Um again, humanizing the twins. This is a good move on our part, I think, because they were fucking freaky beforehand. Look, if I want to see freaky ass twins, I'll watch The Shining. If I want to see freaky ass twins, I'll watch Children of the Corn. Also a good choice. <laughs> but uh at this point, um, I still think we need the three-year time skip because that allows Kuvira to build up the steam she needs to start. Well, steamrolling the Earth Kingdom. I would, I would say, I would say when it comes when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to that kind of thing. Um, would you ha would you have it that but that by this point because because of how long the relationship has been going that um As that Asami and Mako get hitched. I think they're engaged officially at this point. Yeah. I, I think that even at this point, they might think of each other as too young to get married. Mm -hmm. Or they might at least still act like they're too young to get married. But, um, um, but Hiroshi ends up, ends up, um, ends up, ends up, um, jumping the gun. <laughs> yeah. He forces the issue a little bit and that's why they're engaged. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think that because of the three year time skip and some of the, Airbender stuff we got. Uh, Tenzin Island is probably half the size. It's of... not Tenzin Island anymore. It's Tenzin Archipelago, <laughs> and it's full of a lot of Airbenders. It's basically the, the Air Nomads are now uh, almost an adjunct of Republic City, even though the Re Republic City sees Tenzin Island and, and the Airbenders as their own government go governing body, mm -hmm. and just asks them not to fuck up Republic City. <laughs> Um, Republic City is just like, yeah, you guys are nice. You can stay here. Thanks for buying the land from us. That gives us a little bit more capital. But uh, only request, please do not destroy things. <laughs> Tenzin's like, what do you take me for? <laughs> They're like, oh, you're fine, Tenzin. But, you know, the hundreds of new airbenders who are now reveling in this new ability to glide and fly through the air and stuff. Um, they, they, they we, we're, we don't quite trust them. He's like, oh yeah, that. that well, makes especially sense. since re remember that the chi the chief of security in Republic City is is some is um it it has is there is is its own bit of awkwardness with him, with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lin, Lin, Lin being a massive stiff neck and ha and having dated um Tenzin at one point. Yeah. That's uh. um. That's going to be a bit. No matter no matter how much time has passed, that's going to be a bit of awkwardness. Yeah, and then of course, Lynn also won't see her own sister mm -hmm. most of the time. Uh, which which does remind me, we didn't really involve uh, Su Yin and you know her metal city this much um, in in book three, which is where I believe she was greatly influential that's largely because i didn't see a reason to i i yeah i think it, it makes more sense to introduce her in book four because of how tied kuvira and her entire train of people are to their previous uh association with with the metal city mm -hmm. um but i i would have it there's a few things Obviously, by this point, um, Hiroshi has has ser has served his um, his house arrest, and um, 
and is go and is basically basically gone back to to ru to running things and because of that um I'd say I'd say Asa I'd say Asami is Asami is not is no longer a agent but has a but essentially is essentially is in full control of the R and D division of the company, which means we have airplanes now. They're mass produced, mass produced airplanes, and more and more time for her, more time for her to to ex to um t to tinker. Yeah, uh, I, I think I think uh, at this point though, uh, the, the airplanes alone are going to be like. But why use those when we've got airbenders? And the airbenders all look at everybody like, "Are you insane?" <laughs> just because, just because they're going to be people who don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that electric dynamos based on water and, and wind currents are going to be a thing. So lightning benders don't have to. <sighs> yeah, well, you know what? This is. It's as good as since she's running the R and D, she'd have an opportunity to to put to put those things forward instead of being an agent by this point. So yeah, we're doing we're doing the fucking dynamos. Underwater ocean currents are going to save Republic City's energy problem single handedly. Mm -hmm. I love underwater turbines. <laughs> mm. Just imagine if somehow they managed to create nuclear bending. I I'd... would be afraid. <laughs> Yes, that's why, that's why I'm <laughs> killing that line of thought right now. Hey, I can make what ifs if I want to. This is already a what if. <laughs> we have our we have our limits. I know, I know. But uh, because so because because of, Asami's been doing R and D. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'd say I'd say I'd say be, I'd say because of that, a lot of the pressure that she had in previous books is now off of her. Since she doesn't okay. have to run around being the being the eyes and ears for her for her father, so one she has more she has more time to 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 um t to tinker with inventions, and and two she has she has more time to spend with uh, Mako. Oh, we're gonna get Mako and Asami lo lovey dovey moments that actually make sense. Yay! Mm -hmm. um, Don't get me wrong, people. I I may lambaste romance in most fiction for the hell of it. But good romance scenes are never bad. And look, by this point, by this point, it by this point we've had that we've had them. Da by this point, we're at we're at what three, we're at what five five years in the five years in story, and they five years in story. They've been, they they're engaged now, probably for two. Mm -hmm. It was probably early into the time skip that they got engaged. Yeah. That's actually a that's actually a typical that's a typical modern romance, mm -hmm. like real life. Oh, um, and. I would, I would, I would say there's still there's still room for for some degree of gags like um, like that like like them that like um them them going them going out to a fancy di to a fancy dinner at at her at her father's insistence, um, <laughs> and then skipping out on the fancy dinner to go get something fast and junk foody. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say junk. I wouldn't say. Um. I wouldn't say junk foodie, but go. But going to essentially a essentially a dive place, a diner or a dive. Yeah. <laughs> um. If it <laughs> some place that we would see on Triple D. Um. Well, if it, if it, at the risk of sounding too Minnesotan, some place like Mickey's. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. What Mickey, you're if you're about. listening, not you. I do not approve of cannibalism. <laughs> Oh man, phrasing. Is it really phrasing when it's intentional? I'm not going to answer that question because the answer is yes. <laughs> you just oh, wait, did. I just did. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what I always say: don't bullshit a bullshitter. But do you always say that? <laughs> but um, I'm specific. Look. If you've seen Mighty Ducks, you've seen Mickey's Diner. Yes, I have been. I have been there several times. It is a. It is a staple of my home. And that. And that is. Mm -hmm. And that is the. That is the. That is the kind of. Um, that is the kind of place that they. That, that is the kind of place that they'd end up going to because, well, for well, for one, um. I I do want to I do want to go with the gag that Mako really 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 doesn't like wearing suits. Uh, that gag would be good and make sense, but mm -hmm. there'd also be a couple other reasons. 
to Mako. It's 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 not just comfort food, but it's really good comfort food. Mm-hmm. To Asami, it's something new to try because she's only really ever had high class stuff. And, and so this would be this would be like the silver tongue palate coming down to eat the the food of the commons. Mm-hmm. And I'd I'd say I'd say the I'd say the other thing is um I do I do get the feeling that by this amount of time and 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 just just as an off screen kind of thing, Mako has more, Mako has more or less as more or less established himself as a as a successful professional fighter. Mm-hmm. And is possibly even sponsored for the sport by a Sami industry or Soto Industries. Soto mm-hmm. Industries. Yeah. Specifically, the R and D department. <laughs> hey, there there are worse sponsors like Raid Shadow Legends. We don't bring up that cursed name. <laughs> what, I, you I are gonna... not. You are not a. You are not a shill tuber. What the hell was that? I was. <laughs> I was debating whether I was going to use that as the joke or Manscaped. I would have gone with Manscaped only because that's more honorable. <laughs> but, uh... No, it, it's more... It's more... We could even have a sight gag of him going... Of them going to this dinner and then going to a fight that, he's ha- that he has to do right after. <laughs> like, they schedule it for a night and, uh... <sighs> Her dad didn't even check to see what that night was. It was also a night he has a professional fight. So they go and get his comfort actually, food, and then he goes to the pro fight. Actually, let let me ra- let me raise the bar on that. It's a case of they they decided to turn a a um a nor- a fancy dinner into a into din- into dinner and a sh- into dinner and a shell where they they went to it they went to a dive. Then mm-hmm. they, then they decided to just just um. Get just spectate with front row seats to a, to a um to an exhibition bout. After after that, the guy, the guy in it decides to do open challenge, and Asami um po- Asami ends up raising raising his hand <laughs> and tells and tells him to make sure to wear his his uniform. He's mm-hmm. like uniform that it it just shows us it just shows Sato R and D. It's like yeah, but I gotta let the world know that I'm supporting my man somehow. <laughs> And that you know that's just going to give like death glare with a with a blush. We need that gag. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, of course, when he of course when he comes up, you can have the ref going, look, look, whatever you do, don't hit him in the balls. At that point, he death glares the referee. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right. Actually, actually, you know, actually, you know what? What, what would be, what would be even an even funnier gag is he, he says, "Look, look, you know, you know the rules. I'm just, I'm just saying, um, just saying this isn't, this isn't anything goes exhibition. But um, don't, don't kick him in the balls. All right. <laughs> and it go, it goes, it goes normal. The guys, the guys clearly no slouch, but he's, he's kind, he's kind of out of his depth going, going up against somebody who's prop, who's probably a champion by this point. And yeah. Well, it's well just just because he doesn't want to go twenty rounds with the guy after eating, he um he he du- he du- he um dodges, ducks, and punches him below the belt. <laughs> he, he said, "What the?" And the rest like, "What the hell, man?" I said, "I said no hitting in the balls." He said, "You said you said no kicking." I punched him. <laughs> uh. And everybody, of course, laughs. And then Asami is the one slightly embarrassed by the whole thing. She's like, "Did you really have to do that while wearing the the, the Sato R and D logo?" And he just goes, "You're the one who told me to wear my uniform." <laughs> um, <laughs> this I I realize I realize that's I realize that's a um that's a that's a collection of that's a collection of sight gags. But one, it's sight fucking gags funny. and cliches, yeah. and it's funny as shit. Mm-hmm. And I I bring the we that that kind of thing is ju- is just to help um just to help just to help soften the, just help soften the blow with what comes later with um with the with the news that um after after the de- after the death of the Earth Queen the er- the assort the assorted territories that make up the Earth Kingdom 
have been have been in have been um experienced a, a whole lot more tension. Not not full on civil war, but a but low intensity fighting. Mm -hmm. And Cora's been trying to deal with it for years now. Mm -hmm. Um, if I need, I'd say it's, I'd say it's, I'd say it would be kind of, I'd say it's not too far off from the fourth succession war, which was, mm -hmm. which was all because of the fact that everybody had exhausted all their bigger weapons and had, and had done a few too many rounds of war, war crime at clock. Um, the fourth succession war was a low intensity series of skirmishes. And yeah, that's kind of the approach that that they're going because everyone, every, because um, because of how the Earth Kingdom is like China, this is this is essentially us doing our um, warring states period, a uh, kind of warring states period in low grade, with the di with the different kings in the Earth Kingdom. Because mm -hmm. each of each of them, for the longest for the longest time, the the ruler in Ba Sing Se was the ruler of of all of the different fiefdoms, but now that but now that the queen is dead, all of them and are arguing no... that they that they should be the next Earth King, and all of mm -hmm. them have just as much claim to do it. But the pro the problem is, um, you have this you have this kind of situation where if one of them declares it, they're going to piss off their neighbors who are going to try and wipe them out, and and then that's going to result in their allies trying to wipe the other side out, and it's just going to spiral out. Um, so a bit, a bit of warring states and a bit of pre World War One Europe. Yeah. Just in ter just in terms of a powder keg waiting to, waiting to go off. And that and the thing that the thing that ends up starting that powder keg is Kuvira de Kuvira declaring that she that she that she will become the that she, that she will become the next um the next Earth King. Yeah. Well, queen. And 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 um and and for a lot of a lot of people don't take it seriously, but then she ends up kicking the asses of her neighbors. And that's when people start to start to realize, "Oh sh oh shit, this is this she's not fucking around." Mhm. Uh -huh. And because of, because of because of that um you can, this is where you can have the you can have the situation of um Co of Cora trying to defuse the situation and it not going all that well um especially since even though even though Kuvera is mo it Kuvera mostly utilizes metal bending she's still far, she's still far more um she's still far more skilled mm -hmm. and Obvious, obviously, um, while while the while the while the temptation would be there for Korra to use the Avatar state, I'd actually go with the notion that Kuvira is goading her into into using it, but in in order to show that she, in order to show that she's that she's a tyrant in waiting, mm -hmm. and Korra's not, Korra's not doing it, and because of that, she's hol she's holding herself back. Since we've we've established that control is st is still a big thing for her, and she know she knows that if she um uses that state and go and ends up kicking Kuvira's ass, that um it's not going to help matters. Yeah. Since the since the er, since all the other all the other members of the Earth Kingdom would would look at it and say, are are we going to suffer that fate if we end up getting uppity? But. I would, I would, I would have, I would have it that after, after, sh after um, she get, after she gets back, um, li she end, um, she ends up, she ends up, conf she ends up speaking with Lynn, and Lynn, po Lynn posits the idea, the idea of, of getting help from her sister, which she is not happy about. Mm. Because there, there's still there's still the fact that they don't exactly get along, at all. Um, now obvi obviously when it comes to this, we're skipping that whole thing of oh, there we already we already not we're already not using the mercury, so there's so we don't have as much reason to, um, to have Toph show up as emergency doctor. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and to be quite honest, Toph as, Toph as a hermit, after being a parent, never sat with me. I, um... I honestly think that, uh... Toph... Toph as a parent would have wanted to be better than her own parents had been. Because her her she she had some quite actually quite a bit of bitterness raised at her parents. Um and as such, I don't think she would have abandoned her daughters like she did in canon. But I'm not sure how to how we want to reconcile that. Um I would I would say that I would say that she um that Toph ke- that um Toph did Toph um when they when her daughters were of age she um she de- she decided to, she decided to give them more space so mm. she 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 didn't com- she didn't completely go hermit but she um but she has but she has her own house that's a little that's a little out of the way just but it, anybody can anybody can come and visit. I think it should probably be on the outskirts of of one of the lesser known uh, Earth Kingdom provinces or something. Yeah, because even even the because even with that, the idea of her, the she res, she would actively resent the idea of being a politician. Mm-hmm. And and I don't think that she'd stay uh, in Republic City where her one of her daughters has taken over as you know the chief of police. Mm-hmm. And I don't think she'd stay in the city of the metal or the city of metal where you know her other daughter is the ruler. I think she'd just want you know a smaller, quieter life. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, not going crazy as a hermit in the in the swamp. No. And because although although you could probably ha- you could you could probably have the gag of you're not allowed to wear shoes in her house. I like that idea, only because of the fact that uh, it makes you easier to find. I, was I can sense your heart. I can sense your heartbeat through your toes. Mm-hmm. With shoes on, that gets a little harder. Mm-hmm. Um, and because and because of, because of that. I'd I'd say that I'd say that she do, that um there is a meeting between her between her and Cora, and um, <laughs> and and Toph being Toph decides to decides to give her give her a bit of a hard time just with the whole I heard I heard you got your I heard you got you I heard you got your butt kicked by that by that uniter woman. Yeah, uh, I also I also think uh, I also think that Toph being Toph. Would also call Cora some sort of nickname. Not like twink, not Twinkle Toes. I know. I was going to say not Twinkle Toes because that was Ang. Like she might do it once when she mistakes for just a moment that Avatar Cora is Avatar Ang. Mm-hmm. Oh. Just because that memory is going to be there, and the avatars do have a similar aura. Um. um I was think I was thinking of I. This might this might be terrible, but I was thinking that she, I was thinking that she ends up call, she ends up calling Cora Walrus. Um. I mean that's. Hmm. I, I don't even know if they actually have an equivalent to walruses in the Avatar world, but because so, I'm tr- I'm trying to think of something that would be what that would be water related that she that um either, either the... I think in a sarcastic way she should call her a mighty glacier mm-hmm. <laughs> because because uh, you're always sitting there thinking 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 you never do. <laughs> You're just too slow. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty. Sh- I'm pretty sure that this would result in a bit of a sparring, where she, um, where that, where that ends up being her, her big, her big weakness that she, that, Tor, that Toph has a, can can work completely on impulse, and Cora is really a. Af- still, even after all this time, is very afraid of of working on pure impulse. 
Mm -hmm. Because whenever she do whenever she does, bad things happen. Yes. And I'd say I'd, I'd say that I'd say this this kind of this kind of thing would be. I'd say that I'd say there's two things that that can come out of this. One, um, her, um, her learn her um learning metal bending. And I know we've I know we've avoided the whole the whole um having the avatar learn be, learn bending styles, but th but I think it's apropos here. Especially right. considering she's going to be facing Kuvira, an entire army that metal bends. Or or rather, which rather what she ends up learning is a trick to um to to um ca to counter um me to counter metal bending attacks. Kind of like the trick to redirect lightning. Yeah. Um, because... Which would be nice because keeping a metal bender from using metal is a nice, nice tip. It degrade, not degrades, doesn't downgrade them. It it brings them back to just earth bending. I'd say I'd say this this isn't rith what she ends up learning isn't a bending style. She's not she's it's a it's more a case of figuring out how to remove the er remove the earth from metal and es essentially um t essentially tearing it apart. Remove the earth from metal when metal is earth elements. They're called. <laughs> I get what you're saying. I get yeah. what you're saying. The the it basically, I guess remove is the wrong word, but essentially attack the essentially attack the earth, utilize utilizing um, utilizing the the unique kind of combinations that that the avatar can do. Yeah. So it could it could be it could be just fl just flash burn just flash burning it and destroy and destroying the and turning the metal into a bunch of sparks. That'd be pretty cool. The whole the whole thing. Um, ultim ultimately, the whole thing is essentially is essentially um essentially her ca her countering, um, metal bending. Mm-hmm. Um. No matter, regardless of the method used, the whole the whole purpose of it is to is to get is to get rid of that advantage. And to to that to that partic to that particular end, once that once that kind of thing is learned, and we we see because I th I think by this point, um, Kuvira will have gotten enough momentum to st to start really steamrolling the uh, the other um, nations until she gets to bossing say. And because of the fact that they still haven't figured out who's going to be the next, um, who's going to be the next ruler, she ends up just walking in and sitting on the throne. Mm -hmm. And I, w I w norm in the in the core there was the whole thing of her, um, of of her deciding to go after Republic City first because because of the um, of the old colonies. I ha I have a different approach that I want to take. That she she aims to unite the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and by and by do by doing that she she wants to aim for Republic City this the symbol of the symbol of unity and then you and then use its resources to spread her um, goal of unification to the other three nations. You know, go, going to going to the south, north, and the west. Mm -hmm. And I I know it's cheesy to go with the whole you go with the whole um world domination, but she's but give but um, you know how you know how it is with a fascist. It's nev it's never enough. Yeah. Since she since she's under she's under the mindset that if that if ever, if everybody would just go by her rule. There wouldn't be any more conflict. Yeah, so it'll start with the Earth Kingdom, but it'll eventually go to everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, Republic City is already included in her reunification of the Earth Kingdom, which already steps on an entirely different sovereign nation's toes. Yeah, and i i would I would say that in the process of the of the process of this, when she ends up uh, ends up making her assault on Republic City, what she didn't count what she what she didn't count for account for is um 
is the is the Tenzin Archipelago. An army of airbenders who have been training for at least three years, if not longer, considering his earlier students. Mm -hmm. And of course, Tenzin, an airbending master, and all of his children, who probably at this point are at the same about the same level as as Aang would have been in, in, at whatever age he was when they're uh, their age. Yeah. Not only that, you've got the entirety of um, the Sato Industries, which al which also means you which also means you've got air superiority. Mm -hmm. Something that uh, I don't think she would have ever seen because the airplanes are still probably only used on sea routes since they probably would have only thought of the idea of landing on land recently. Mm -hmm. um, and also because they probably would only be using the airplanes short range. You know, the, the flight to the northern the northern uh, water tribe was an emergency and with a prototype and they lost that plane. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the, uh, the, the flight, the, the, the more, the more, uh, common use is probably shipping from, you know, nearby areas for Republic City mm -hmm. and also probably shipping to and from Tenzin Archipelago. I, I can I can certainly go with that. But now you've got lots of planes that also have well explosives strapped to them. Mm -hmm. Rudimentary bombers. <laughs> um. And with and with that and with that with that kind of. And of course we can, of course we can't have bombing runs without without um without right of the Valkyries. Ah, <laughs> uh, of course you want to put in right of the Valkyries. <laughs> I like German opera. What can I say? <clears throat> the Germans, thank you. <laughs> um, but on top of all of that, uh, Mako has trained his body to fight. Without the need for bending. But that doesn't mean he's neglected bending. No. At all. Uh, Bolin's lava bending has only gotten better and better. The reason Tenzin Archipelago is an archipelago is because he raised those islands himself. He figured out more... planet bending. You need you need more space, Tenzin? Hold on. Let's uh let's see if we can get you another island. <laughs> Clears it with Republic City. You need another island? What? Fine. Earth into lava bending. Lava bends up giant. And more more islands. Mm -hmm. So, um, fortifications are already much more than Kuvira would have uh, would have uh, thought for Republic City because the Earthbenders and Bolin have raised gigantic fucking walls, which Kuvira is probably going to scoff at because <laughs> we're at, we're Earthbenders too. Who cares? She um, probably doesn't count with the about the, about if about if somebody breaks tries to breaks into tries to break through those walls the lava comes out. Yeah, what she doesn't understand is those law those walls are strategically filled with pockets of lava. Mm -hmm. It's one of those types of traps. Because I know I know it sounds like I know it sounds like I'm trying to down downplay Kuvera's um strategies. But I, I, but the key, th the key thing that I'm, that I'm make, that I'm making is that she, um, after she conquered the Earth Kingdom, she thought that the rest would be smooth sailing because of how effective she was. But the thing is, um, she was using Earth King, she was using Earth Kingdom tactics against people who knew Earth Kingdom tactics or who f who fought with Earth Kingdom tactics. I.e., she, um, she was under the impression of of um. Warfare having rules. Yep, and uh, of course, because the team didn't split up, and she didn't get somebody like Bolin under her, among other things, mm -hmm. and because all of the team stayed together and got better at what they do, inventing new things and doing new things with what they have. Um, you, we've we've changed the entire battle. Uh, just the entire infrastructure of how this battle would would work because everybody is so different. 
This is this is a perfect example of the snowball effect. We rolled a tiny pea-sized snowball down the hill all the way back in, in book one with the changes we made. Mm-hmm. Now this is a boulder rolling down on you. And the boulder doesn't stop for anyone. Oh. <laughs> it w- because and because because of because of that to kind um Solzhen's comet had had that ma- had that massive battle and we're we're kind of um mirroring that with it with this particular story. Mm-hmm. It's just that the thing is in core she di- she did she did steamroll be- she did steamroll into Republic City because of the giant fucking mech. Um, in this case, it's a lot of it's a lot of um, advanced um, bits of, bits of metal bending and some some degree of art- some degree of artillery warfare. Mm-hmm. Because I'd, I'd imagine that she that every single member of her army is some degree of metal bender. Yes, I would imagine that that since they were all earthbenders, she would have tried her best to teach them all to metal bend. Mm-hmm. And. Beca- and it, as a res- as a result, you have you have a army of ver- of of hi- of highly trained metal benders. The key, the key, the key thing though is that despite how, despite how highly trained that they, they are, they're still um they're still outnumbered because you ha- because on the other side you have the Repu- the Republican army with it with its air sh- with its um airship fleet already. Mm-hmm. You have, and now it's new short-range airplane bombers. Mm-hmm. You have you have you have the fact that the int- that the entire route to Republic City from the from the Earth Kingdom is lit is littered with lo- is littered with lava-filled wall traps, which uh, um which are go- which are going to result in in needing entirely new routes in order to e- in order to even get there, or a very slow movement. Mm-hmm. In order to perform the world's the, the Avatar world's first mind sweeping, <laughs> that's You're... what they are. Mm-hmm. They're fucking mines. They're just you know mines that are twenty feet tall and full of lava. Yeah, and pro- and your pro- your um pro- you probably ha- you probably have um you probably have air you probably have um earthbenders lying in wait to cr- to create surprise sinkholes. Basically, basically making making this march instead of a cakewalk, it's a it's a it is a it is a march through a fucking obstacle course through uh, made from hell. Oh, it's the Vietnam War. <laughs> look, right, look, right, what, you, right, what you know. <laughs> Military history, okay. If we're if we're gonna be if we're gonna be dealing with someone doing a military campaign to conquer, then yeah, I think studying military history for writing is is a advisable move. It is quite apropos. Mm-hmm. Now, that brings us to that brings us to the inevitable fight where where um I'd I'd say by that by that point in time, Cora has um. Has got has has conf- has confront has um arrived to confront, um, Kuvira once again. It's just it's just that this time she it's just that this time she, she under. Not only does she understand the tactics, but Kuvira has been forced to be put on the defensive because, well, Republic City has people from all from all corners of the earth, meaning all corners of potential bending, and all f- and all four of those representations are telling her to fuck off. And also at this point, I think this is the part where I establish that the uh, the trope chain of villainy breaks. Each time we've established the final villain confrontation, we've also established that each villain is confronted with the fact that they became something they hated. Mm-hmm. Kuvira knows that what she's doing is very strict and uh, very, very destructive. But unlike the rest of them, it's not she's doing it because it's right. She's doing it because it's necessary. And so you can't have a, a moment of, 
oh, come to your senses, realize that you know you were wrong about this all along and became the thing you hated, because she doesn't hate it. She thinks it's the only way. She thinks that this is the only way that true harmony and peace can come along, mm -hmm. and no one's going to convince her otherwise. This is now, instead of a uh, confrontation of self, a clash of ideals. Mm -hmm. And... and uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I would, I would say that in this confrontation, as tempting as it is to have a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm, th I'm thinking this is a four, this is a four-on-four -four fight. Yes. Kuv Kuvira and Kuvira and her and her honor guard versus Team Avatar. Yeah, because I, w I would say that at this point, our some of the the distiff that we've added to to, to uh, Team Avatar, including the twins are off helping other parts of the Republic Army and such. Mm -hmm. It is our core it is our core group at this point of Korra, Asami, Mako, and Bolin. Mm -hmm. And um with with this with with this in mind, it do, even though you, you do have essentially four for um a variety versus four um highly metal versus, benders versus a bunch of highly skilled metal benders, it's it um it starts out even, but ev eventually eventually the tide turns in the on the east, on the side of the heroes until it's um Korra versus Kuvira again, which start, yeah. which does start out with Kuvira getting getting the upper hand, but just just when just when she's just when she's about to make a decisive blow, that's when Korra plays her trump card because the way I, the way I visualize it, Kuvira throws throws one more. Um, met metal um, plate at her at her at her to tr to try and to try and finish the job, and Cora Cor Cor makes one move and that and that metal plate, it's not there anymore. It's just a bunch of sparks. Yep. And that's also the point where where uh, Cora goes full avatar mode. Yeah. And the and try try it keeps. Tries tries again a few more times, and each each time that um that one of those plates hits her, it just becomes a bunch of sparks. Mm -hmm. And that is that is when she's that's when she's on the defensive. And truth be told, we did we did um I know we I know we said that we're about the whole hesitancy when it came to the Avatar state, but I do want to remind you that we did use it as a la as a last ditch tide turner. In um, the first book, yes, but it was more had, unconscious than anything. Yeah, this time, this but at this point, it's a case of complete conscious and complete control. This is not this is not say, um, Ang using the Avatar state against Ozai. This is her using it with with an extreme amount of precision, which is what it takes to do this um, metal destruction technique. Mm hmm. Since what she's what she's effectively doing is is um you is essentially a mix of fire and earth bending, yep, oh, and super, not and, and not in a way of lava bending either. No, it's super. It's it is inc it is superheating the earth within metal at an extremely at an extremely rapid degree. Essentially, um, an inverse of flash freezing. It, your flash burning. Um, it, um, the when when a uh. When a solid is changed straight into a gas without going in through the liquid phase, that's called sublimation. Mm -hmm. This would be this would be uh, metal sublimation via flash fire. Yeah. And grant granted, when you're doing this, it it ends up create ends up creating a bit a big a significant boom and a lot of sparks because that's a lot of energy being being used all at once. But makes for effective explosives if the avatar ever wants to bombard a person. Yeah, but. Because of the fact that this is the Avatar state, there's energy for days. Yeah. So she can so because normally normally this is the kind of thing that would not be advisable because you'd either get caught with splash damage or you'd wear yourself out quick. Yep. But because of how because of the endless energy that the Avatar state has, she can keep doing this for as long as she needs to. And um. It's and once and that's when we have Kuvira. Um, cornered in this situation, because she's been so confident in her mastery over metal bending that 
the idea of using earth that the even the idea of using earth bending had ne- had hadn't really occurred to her. Mm-hmm. And I am. Um, go ahead. Oh, uh, go ahead. You were probably go ahead. I have I have a thought for the end of the battle, but go ahead. Um, it's at it's, but at but at the climax of it, when when Kuvera thinks that she's going to get taken out, that's when um Cora exits the state. Mm-hmm. And of course, Kuvira is going to be a slightly confused as to why. Yep. Now you you said you had an idea as far as the ending. I'd like to hear that. Kuvira's personality we haven't really changed at all. Mm-hmm. Kuvira's personality was one thing that we we both agreed was pretty much a good point. That it made sense and it, it established itself. Mm-hmm. Kuvira would not surrender. Her army may be defeated and, and captured, but there's no way Kuvira would would uh, would allow herself to be used as a as a symbol of defeat. She would um at the t- at that time, uh, I'm guessing, Korra comes out of the Avatar state is going to try and convince her to see reason. Kuvira is going to go something along the lines of. So long as there are separate rulers in this world, there will always be conflict. There will never be peace for the people. I'm not going to let you break my symbol of peace by capturing me. And then she'll probably kill herself. I'd, I can, I can see where you, I can see where you're going with that. The, because the only other thing I was, I was considering is, um, is her is her is Cora actually using energy bending on her? Um, I even then Kuvira would still kill herself. Mm-hmm. And May, maybe maybe she energy bends her, takes away her ability to bend to to mirror what happened with Ozai. But unlike Ozai, who was kept prisoner, um, and didn't ever try to kill himself in prison, which was re- weird. He figured Ozai of all people would just because of his pride. Um, Kuvira has the has the determination and and resolve to go through with it. I get and the feeling that her that her attempt that her attempt is basically you know the whole the whole thing with the traps that we that we've mentioned. Yeah, she ends up she ends up using er, she ends up using earth bending to essentially bury herself. Yeah, crush herself under tons of earth. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade when they're waving goodbye to the night. <laughs> Except in this case, it's not a sad goodbye. It's a "I hate you, and now I will die" goodbye. Mm-hmm. But reg- but regardless, the um after that the the day is the day is one um the the remaining members of Cu- of Kuvera's army um surrender. Yep. I'd say, I'd I'd say in I'd say in the, I'd say in the in the aftermath of this of this, um, the, the the um, ins- the Earth King the Earth Kingdom has the Earth Kingdom instead of this instead of going with this whole thing of Bossing Say being the ruler of all of them the Earth Kingdom decides that they will be that they will essentially become a Earth um, I'd say confederacy. Is it would be an, would be an appropriate approach? Each of the fiefdoms operates operates independently of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, you can still you can still have trade between them. They can still have trade between them, but none of them have any none of them have any real authority over each other. They're state they're states that co- they are member states that co that have mutual cooperation, and that's it. Yeah. Um. And I'd I'd say I'd say in this kind of epilogue that would be as perfect an opportunity as as any to officially tie the knot when it comes to um when it comes to us when it comes to Asami and Mako. You think the epilogue should be their wedding? Yeah, I'd say I'd say that makes a lot more sense than a than a wedding between between Varric and Julie. 
Yeah. You know, because it's it's something that we've been following for four books by this point, and I think it's earned. It is. Um, and obviously, um, <laughs> obviously, obviously, even after all this time, there are still there are still some old habits that don't die. Mako still Mako still doesn't like wearing suits. Um, Cora still is Cora still doesn't like wearing dresses. But but both of them decide to grin and bear it for Hiroshi's sake. And we get Eska catching the bouquet. Mm-hmm. And Bolin going shit 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 shit. <laughs> And this this is the and this is where and of course this results in um Bolin be Bolin being pi- Bolin being picked on by 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 Mako because well that's what older brothers do to younger brothers this is the way this works this is the way of the world mm-hmm. now when it comes to when it comes to the when it, I'd say I'd say when it comes to the remaining parts of the of the of the epilogue, um, I do th- I do think that that um as that in the because what because the final the final moments of the epilogue I'm thinking of doing instead of instead of something as dumb as Asami and Korra go, going off into the spirit world together, the approach that I'm considering instead is. A kind, a kind of montage of of the of the years go, of the years going by. Um, of of what of what happened in the years since, like say, um, Asami officially becoming president of so- of Sato Industries, um, Mako effect Mako retiring from 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 fighting, um, and 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 opening up opening up a gym. I'll, a la, a la the uh, bo- a la the the way we treated the boulder gym <laughs> <laughs> um the boulder teaches everyone <laughs> and i'd say, i'd say um i'd i'd say when it co- i'd say i'd say um the or i'd say the i'd say ma i'd say um mako ends up, ends up um Having ends up with du- essentially with dual citizenship since eventually he ends up getting hitched. So he's spending time in Republic City and um and spending time in the nor- in the Northern Water Tribe. You mean Bolin? Yeah, you Bolin. just said Mako. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say I'd I'd I would I would say that um when it when it comes to when it, I'd say um t- I'd say even though even though there's some awkwardness mi- um the ba- the Bay Fong sisters reconcile at least a little bit given all, given all that's happened yeah and their and their mom tells them to mm-hmm. um I do think General Iro ends up ine- inevitably in this case um taking the position of Fire Lord after his mother Izumi yeah mm-hmm. I, I I think I think that I think um I didn't correct you earlier when I really should have. General Iro is is Zuko's grandson, mm-hmm. and, and we were going with a father son. Yeah, when <laughs> and that was that was our bad. Yeah, our our bad. Look, it's look, it's been a long it's been a long ass day. Mm-hmm. And um, look we look we 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 have to we have to deal with tech support. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put I'll put it I'll put it that way. If you know, yeah. you know. Service jobs. Anyway, um, but the the I'd say the culmination of the culmination of this is 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 um. Well, actually, before I get to the culmination, one other thing that is that I think I'm going to go with is um. The the um air no. After after a significant amount of time, the air nomads have started building temples, as ki- as kind of their own um kind of kind of the, kind of their own embassies within the other nations. The kind co- of like how the air temples used to be. Mm-hmm. The core the core the core archipelago, which um, which after after a while, Republic City said, "Stop, no more islands." 
<laughs> and Bolin said, okay, and just started linking all of the islands together into one giant landmass. Yeah, and move, move that big, move that massive landmass into the center of the world. And so now we have Tenzin Continent. <laughs> its official name on official maps is, Air no is the Air Nomad Continent. Mm -hmm. But everyone calls it Tenzin Continent. Much Boomy is, is is significantly proud of that particular joke he pulled on his younger brother. Mm -hmm. And because and because of the fact that because of the fact that everyone's going to call it that even even after they're both dead, he ends up getting the last laugh. <laughs> um, but the but the but the culmination with all of this is um is a Cora event Cora eventually um pa eventually passing. And. In, and um, in her, in her, in her, um, in her, in her, essentially her, essentially her will, um, she she asks she asks for a she asks for a couple of things. One, um, to to make to because what she in, in her the way I see it in her final days she ended up she ended up um she ended up speaking with every single past incarnation of herself. Of of the Avatar, mm -hmm. and get and getting every single story and getting every single story that she could from them and writing them all down, essentially amassing volumes of biographies of the past Avatars. Not only that, um, I would have said that part of part of her life would have been uh, chronicling every every piece of of knowledge needed to become the avatar mm -hmm. the teachings you need the techniques you must know your responsibilities and duties mm -hmm. um all into in, into their own instructional novels as well yeah Ascent and when and when she when she passed away as part of her will she spe she specifically asked the White Lotus to work with the other four nations, to to not only to not only watch watch over, but also help but also help train help train um the help train whoever comes next, in in the um in the cycle in the yeah. in the cycle the, the in ev that um to basically teach basically teach that per that particular person everything that she had learned. Including the most important lesson of all, that the Avatar is the Avatar only because they love the world and wish to protect it. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel like that is an effective capstone to to that would befit the title of this particular series, the Legend of Korra. Yeah, and and as a bit as a bit of a stinger, I probably would have it that um that who. That the the next at the next person in the cycle would probably be and probably be from the Earth Kingdoms, and I think that yeah, fi fire, air, water, then Earth, and that and that per that person ends up um ends up ends up coming across a book in the in their studies simply called the Legend of Korra, her own biography, and. Yes, I I am I am kind of cribbing notes from the ending of the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> but I think it's earned in this case. Earned and effective. Mm -hmm. More importantly, even though it's earned, it is also effective. Um, now as for answering some details that I'm sure the fan base will ask. <sighs> Why didn't we ever detail anything about Korra getting a romance? It's not relevant to her character arc. Maybe in the montage at the end of the epilogue, there's some scenes of her having a family. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe she never has a family. There are avatars who never had families. Um, we don't... We didn't feel the need to define that because it isn't relevant. When when you can, from the base from the base show, take away Korra's romances, and they change almost nothing, mm -hmm. then they're not necessary. Pretty pretty much so. And when it when it comes to when it comes 
the other the other the other factor is that um even is that we have i find i uh, we ended up spending so much time building up one building up one and a half particular um romances um mako and asami and we stuck to our guns with that the entire way through mm -hmm. and eska and bolin is our is our half because we never because it's only in the montage that they ended up going all the all the way with that. Yeah, we we established the beginnings of it within the series, and then the epilogue montage shows. Yeah, Bolin and Eska also got married, and Eska, being the uh, the leader of the Northern Water Tribe now, because apparently the council decided she'd be the head counselor, mm -hmm. which is a weird double way of making her leader and also still remaining a council. I think I think they decided to bill it as first among equals kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, her brother Desna is uh, constantly making trouble for Bolin because it's hilarious to him. Mm. He's got to tease his new brother-in-law. <laughs> um, I do. Th I do think it'd be. F I do think it'd be funny as hell if um, if es if es if um, Eska and Bolin had um, ha ended up having twins themselves. I could see it. Mm -hmm. Twins are more genetically prevalent amongst twins, so I could see it. Yeah. Just because uh, it would be karmic hilarity. Mm -hmm. And I, I will, I will admit that part that um, when I visualize it, I keep thinking of the twins from. Um, I've been, I've been watch, I've been watching the dub of um, Fena Pirate Princess, and I can't help but enjoy the mischievousness of the twins when it comes to the, when it comes to that show. Honestly, every time we say twins, do you know what comes to my mind? What? Palam and Porum. <laughs> <laughs> That's not till Monday. Yeah, but would you like to see his fire rod? I hate you. <laughs> Can you believe that joke got past the censors? Yes, because fingerprints got past the censors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, true. Video games were even less uh less regulated than TV then. Mm -hmm. Rails though. <laughs> but um as far as far as I as far as um as far as as far as as far as, as, far as Asami and Ma and Mako's kid, they I'm not going to have them I'm not going to have them twins. They just ended up having a lot of kids. Enough to have their own sports team. <laughs> hey, it's a trope for a reason, damn it! I'm not. I'm not have. I'm not having the. I'm not having the family be a pro bending team. I'll put it that way. <laughs> um. But I would imagine their eldest daughter wants to be a punchy person like her dad, though. Pro probably. Um. But the the you have I'd probably you'd probably have a you probably have a mix of some people want to be a punchy person and uh, and uh, and others want and others want to be a and others want to be an inventor, um. But as but when it I'd say um I'd say Cor, I'd say Cor, I'd say um. Cora her Cora herself probably probably wouldn't be probably wouldn't be having any kids but her um uh, but. Her fa but but she probably as the years go on would end up ha would end up having younger sisters, mm -hmm. and in her and in her old age would be would be would end up getting called Auntie Cora. <laughs> um. But I but I do want to have that capstone of of the next Avatar reading the reading the Legend of Korra. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that would that would be an effective capstone because. The thing, the, the thing, the thing is, ideally, um, doing multiple seasons with one villain a season is not something that I w that I would advise, um, unless you unless you can get a lot more episodes. And unfortunately, Nickelodeon has that whole "you're only getting twenty episodes" shtick. So it so there has there has to be some improvising. 
but I th but with with this kind of setup, we've effectively created a sn a snowball to where instead of instead of someone who's a Mary Sue, we have someone who is tr who's trying to who's trying to live up to an idea of an an idea of a um, mature leader and and explore and exploring the nature of being the avatar. Mhm. Mm and in the pro in the process of in the process of that, we Mako ended up going from someone boring to someone who um who ha who what who because he f because he felt because he um chose to do what he wanted instead of what was expected of him, ended up becoming very successful. The same and and that ended up leading to his relationship with Asami. Um, Ma, um, Bolin. Bolin. Bolin ended up be and ended up being able to f find success simply by instead instead of instead of being the com instead of being the comedy guy he just he just ended up being the innocent guy which which helped which helped him which helped him help others. And, and eventually landed him with a with a more human set of the twins, and an actual romance instead of this possessive bitch telling him that she owns him. Mm -hmm. And thro throughout all of this, you have because when we started when we started this particular endeavor back in March, um, we had fixated on that title, the Legend of Korra. Yes, that we that what we were. And um, it's one of those things that a lot of pe that that kind of wording is something that a lot of people don't put a whole lot of thought into. The but the I, but in this particular case, we are seeing a legend. I'd say um, I'd 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 say the cl the closest and if I need to use a weeb analog, even even though you've had your falling out with the with the series um that whole tagline in um. In the in the anime version of My Hero Academia, about this is the story of how I became the world's greatest hero. Yeah, that's we ended. I th I'd say we ended up taking a concept like that and going all in with it. This is the story of how of how Korra became a, became a great avatar of her age. So what you're saying, and I hate myself for doing this one, <clears throat> is that First we took the everything. idea. Uh, no, I I've hated myself for numerous jokes I've made. I just never said it. This one had to be said. <clears throat> so what you're saying is we took the concept of this is the story of how I became the greatest X and we went plus ultra with it. One of these days I'm going to really kick your ass. You know that? You're going to try, but I fight back as hard as you do. <laughs> either, either, that, either that or I'm just going to surprise pie face you or some shit. Especially oh, do for that. that. Oh, don't do that. You will get as bad as you give, <laughs> if not worse. Uh, and I w and with that, with that, with that in with that in mind, I think I think that is that is going to be a effective capstone for this almost four hour episode of Geek Watch. Jesus Christ. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm back in the days of Monastery Live. I feel like I'm back in the days of world building with uh with the the elemental card set. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna bring that back sometime down the line. I just need to figure out how. Oh, but with with all that said, I hope you've I hope you've enjoyed our um our elaborate theory crafting and bullshitting. Um, we will I will I will be back with I will be having a few interviews. In fact, I've got at least I've got at least one every day for this week, and um and a couple and a couple and tw and twice on sun and twice on Sundays, um. And of of course um, next week. We will be we'll be back proper with an, with another with another episode of Geek Watch. So keep an keep an eye out for that because I'm I'm pretty sure we'll be as full of surprises as we always are. In fact, let me see. Oh, next week's going to be a bit lighter, but definitely going to be a bit exploratory, given recent events. I'll just say mm. to a certain to a certain company in the UK, kiss my black ass. 
Oh, see, he gets to make black jokes about himself, but he doesn't like me making black jokes about him. Fuck off. <laughs> but Love until... you too, brother. <laughs> but until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.